try to share the screen with you, all right? Let's try and see whether the screen can be okay or not. Can you all see? No, doctor. You cannot no. see, yeah? Huh? Cannot see, all right. Let, let me see what to do. Dr. Ho, can you hear me, Dr. Ho? Yes, good. Thank you. I'm testing my line. <laughs> yep. Uh, we will start in another two minutes. All yeah, right. Just, no. just I'll try to share this. What happened to this one minute? Can't see the file. Uh, wait. Have, have you here? I got this green stuff called share the screen. That should be okay, isn't it? Do you see now? Is it uploading now? Hi, hello. Can you all see? Uh, yes, Dr. Ang. Boleh tak? Boleh, boleh. Belum lagi. Screen, Dr. Ang. Yes. Bel belum lagi. Macam mana kat tempat saya dah share dah tu? Ah, tak, full screen. Yang oh, dekat slideshow. Slideshow. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Slideshow. Slideshow. Nanti, 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 nanti. Uh, bawah tu tak nampak nanti sekejap nanti sempong ni dulu hmm. boleh tak? yes can ah? Uh, can ok terima kasih banyak-banyak ok we are starting now A distinguished guest ladies and gentlemen Thank you for joining us at the Afoco Regional Webinar on ex situ conservation and carbon sequestration potential of red list tree species. And a very good morning to all of you from Kuala Lumpur. I hope you have had a good rest. Uh, yesterday, we heard of many interesting and unique conservation efforts on red list species that were and are being undertaken by different ASEAN member states, as well as from the Republic of Korea. Uh, yesterday, we we have also heard from some Malaysian experiences in conservation, uh, improved techniques for caring of seeds and how to produce good and healthy planting materials. But today, we'll take a slightly different route. We are moving from labs and nurseries to the planting sites. On the forefront is no other than my boss, Dr. Lai Ho Ang, a PhD in plant and soil from the University of Aberdeen. He has served in FRIM for 34 years as a researcher in the field of reclamation, rehabilitation, and restoration of degraded sites and fragmented forest land. He green and developed the Tin Tailings Afforestation Center, or TTAC, a former barren X tin mine into a depository of IUCN red list tree species. Dr. Ang also designs and establishes new forests on problematic soils and open green space as a consultant for various private companies, including in Paya Indah Wetlands, Aeon's Forest Program, Ara Damansara Eco Park, and at University of Petronas in Perak. With such extraordinary experiences, I'm sure all of us can't wait to hear from him. So now, may I call upon Dr. Ang to share his experiences on conservation in an extinct mine. Dr. Ang, uh, please. Thank you very much. Um, very kind word from the moderator, Dr. Ho Wai Man. Um, first of all, I'm uh, very thankful for this webinar to be uh, carried out and organized uh, by Prim and also with the great help of uh, Afoko, and also with the Thailand counterparts. Uh, basically, I'd like to share with you uh, the little that I learned and the little that I have for the last 30 over years, and all the essence of it is in the uh, Tin Tailing Aforestation Center. So uh, basically, uh, all this work 
will be concentrated in that 300 acres land, right? Without much to do, let us then uh, have a look on what we could uh, have for this one hour or so uh, time. Now, uh, normally when we talk about XC2 conservation, uh, we have heard that yesterday. Uh, definitely, it's something that you need to do uh, because uh, sometimes whatever species that's under critical and danger uh, threatened, uh, particularly this uh, vulnerable, uh, all this uh, need to be kept in a safe place. Uh, you know, ironically, it need to be kept outside the forest because we know that lowland forest is fast uh, depleting and because of development, now it's part of development. Uh, so this is also part of uh, developed countries that need to go through. Uh, that's the reason why uh, when you say exit to conservation, we put in mind uh, what really need to be done on our site, where to do it and how to do it. Now, when we do ex to conservation, you're talking about keeping those trees that will be uh, basically diminishing uh, from either land use or sometime because of the um, exploitation without proper regulatory control. So certain species has been removed too much and then could not uh, have enough population to regenerate. Yeah. Uh, so whatever reason is that ex situ conservation, uh, though you have in all the many botanic gardens and park or throughout Peninsula Malaysia, I think it's uh, still not enough because I have to realize that uh, very little taxa they consider to be IUCN to be kept. But at the same time also, you're aware that uh, this is about uh, point, it's about Roughly, uh, you know, in terms of carbon, is about fifty percent of these three carbon sequestrations on the carbon dioxide in this world um, that has been done by the tree, and uh, the rest another fifty is done by the sea, right? So the land is from the trees. So whatever we plant eventually uh, will come to the part of uh, carbon sequestration. Then you can talk about carbon credits and everything. So we ask where to plant and what type of land that you need to be planted. Uh, so when you look at it, then you realize that the extent of degraded lands, now this data is a bit too late, too old already, yeah, but need to be updated. But basically is that when you look at the land, secondary forest is in the forest reserve, you can't touch them. This under forest land, whatever you plant there is still part of compensating what has been lost. You cannot get credits. Sitting cultivated area, people will redo it again after seven years or sometimes they just come in and redo. Uh, so you cannot be permanent. So the only thing that you can think of uh, will be abundant agriculture land that you have to sign agreement. X the mine, uh, then uh, beach reaches interspersed with sway, this breeze. And then police stock low over forests that were converted to plantation. Maybe 30% of them, uh, they could not really do much because of the terrain. Yeah? Uh, so when we do something, we have to think that after 20, 30 years, uh, whatever we have done uh, could be used. Could it be uh, basically uh, to be for the added value? So whatever we do now, we have to talk, think of two main very important parallel thoughts in our mind. First, Red list or threatened tree species. Whatever we do, we're going to do this. And whatever plant, we try to plant this. Whether in urban planting or whatever planting that we have. And then whether it's tradable carbon credits or not. All right? uh, we can get carbon everywhere. Pig, swamp, forest, anything. But that it is tradable. Now, there are three important interconnected principles. It means to say, if one of them is not done properly, the other two will be affected. If one is not kept sustainably, the other two eventually will come to nothing. Right? Now, TTAC, uh, bigness, the commitment of our team, whole team of us, 
They basically spend most of the time, every all R&D is there. And uh, we, we just focus there, right? So basically, we ensure that these three important interconnected principles are always a practice, right? Now, uh, when we look at site, which is the first principle that we have to think about. Now, on we, for me, I felt that, you know, sometimes you can get, categorize them with five different steps, but some of my good friend has done. Uh, then I felt that it's too complicated. Uh, the most simplest thing to do is uh, basically can make them to three. First, uh, where you have to lose vegetation, anything less than 30%, I mean 70% vegetation gone. And then there is this change in soil composition. And then there's change of water table. And then there's change of microclimate. Uh, when you have the ir uh, you know, irradiance, radiation that you receive on the ground, uh, more than 50%, then you're in trouble. Uh, so so if, then you go to the medium. Medium is soil, is intact. No change water table. Even though you receive IR more than uh, 50%, it's still manageable if you plant the right species, right? And then the best is local forest on your right and then secondary forest, right? No change water table. Uh, so the ideal microclimate is IR, you know, it's basically watt per meter square, the irradiant that we see. Uh, must be measured at 1.5 meter uh, above the ground level. Yeah? Now, after we have this category in our mind, so the one that determines us that we have to do is uh, look at composition of soil, water table, and then IR. Uh, once you get it over this, and then you know where to place them ready. And also, that's how you should plan and how uh, all the resources and strategy need to be gathered. Right? Now, uh, to some, you know, this is the station that uh, basically I spend all my R&D life there, right? And, um, and we come of that because we attach ourselves with the thing that we do after some time, we love the place. It's almost like every part of us. And uh, we have this 300 acres land, it's 125 hectare. So you have pawn and the rest. So basically you quantify them they have water body 17.2%, but 21.9 hectare. Slime, 45.5. Sand, 32.1. And then sandy slime, 6.62. Right? So when you talk about sand killing, uh, this is the impression that we get. And this is a reality. So when we take over the land, this is the thing that uh, this is why they have to deal with. So it falls under class, the class poor, right? So we have to do a lot of work. And now, of course, in tin we have to know a bit because uh, you need to know basically your site. Uh, you know that it's very unstable because there's sometimes uh, what underground drainage running. So we have sinkhole. And then also we have heavy metal. And we have gone through that. And then the ingestion, you plant, plant, they take out heavy metal. And then you have radiation so normally uh, thorium 232 and uranium 238 they're exceeding high so if you work in tin tailing in urban area uh, one of the effect of this um, radiation is you lost your hair and then x in mind a uh, very important thing is we have to find out the component of the mechanical impedance where that will affect the water hydraulic cycle and also soil metric water, right? Uh, so you, now this is, since many, many times I show this, because this is the most important things a planter need to look at. When you have compaction, you have a lot of other side effects that come uh, after you planted the plant. So sand, basically is a, uh, you have this gray, uh, bubble is the highest. It range about more than 2.5, more than 2 most of the time because of the structure, because of the mechanical uh, processes that, uh, you know, when it was deposited and sent, 
all the lorries and heavy machinery go over it. And then, of course, you have these uh, poor chemicals for properties. And uh, compared to soy, uh, the sand has the least in terms of uh, uh, nutrients, right? Uh, so all these are in vitro. We characterize them. And the soy also in vitro. Uh, one patch of those uh, good mineral soy, they're untouched at the fringe of the uh, X mining activities. Uh, this we extract and then we do uh, basically chemical analysis. Uh, so, sorry, Dr. An, to interrupt. Uh, would you like to share your slide? I Sam, I thought I thought this, you didn't see the slide. No, we only oh. see you. Ah, <laughs> uh, my goodness! All right, I think we we have to end the show. Uh, what to do now? Let me see. Um, Can you see the slide now? Um, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay, I think better. Or would you rather like the secretary to share on your behalf? Mm, yeah, but the thing is, uh, how to how are you going to do it? You can you can you get it now? Yeah, we. I think we have your a copy of your file and we will try to share it, okay? Sure, okay. All right. All right. What Just happened? hold on for a second. Sure, sure. This is a technical catch up because just now we check, it's all of us can see it and suddenly it's gone off. But anyhow, we just have to redo some. Uh, though has spoken, we'll not repeat, we just go on. Uh, yeah, it yeah. seems that the secretary do, doesn't have your file. Uh, come again now, Jay Okay. Uh, Doctor, it appears that uh, we don't have your file, so you have to <laughs> share it yourself. Down, down there. Down yeah, there. okay. Great, Dota, we can see your slide show now. You may unmute. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and sorry, apologize for this technical hitch out. Don't know what happened. All right, now uh, I have basically gone through all this. Yeah, so we continue where we stop. All right, that was the last 15 minutes we have done here. Uh, important thing is to take note that you have to deal with mechanical impedance. When any planting, any soil disturbance involve heavy machinery, you have to make sure that they are properly loosened up. All right, okay.
No, now this is a very um, important concept that we have. Uh, when you do deal with poor site, you have to do with planting uh, right species, and then also in waterlogged area, you have to deal with the waterlogged. After the site property have been improved, right? Then only we can do the enrichment planting or other artificial regeneration, right? Uh, so this is a very important step that needs to be taken. Sometimes it takes a few years, right, to get it done. Now, what happened is that uh, when you, after you establish uh, planting, maybe using pioneer, using acacia, whatever it is, you have to check. Uh, what happened to the site quality, right? Uh, so you have to use basically pyranometer to make sure that you can capitalize your IR yeah, to make sure it is uh, more than 50%. And then you start to see that the, you have this uh, PAR has been cut down, but this is sufficient uh, for the um, those uh, three species, particularly EETS or your red list. Uh, that uh, cannot be uh, accustomed or adapted for open planting, right? And then uh, particularly, we are to be noted that if your relative humidity at the uh, time from about 11 o'clock until two, uh, the moment it falls less than uh, 30%, your plant is undergoes very severe uh, stomata training and then most of most if ever they can survive they were just stunted right now so you must be make sure that your nurse crop just acacia or hopia dorata like in tintilling uh, in TTAC uh, could improve the microgrant to a level suitable for growing due to cup when the intensity of ground level is reduced to 30 to 50 percent of open intensity that's why we put it as one the classification right and then not only uh, in a site being improved microclimate, but also in terms of soil organic litter. All right. So this is basically uh, acacia give the most, followed by hopia, but they are almost at the same range. All right. Uh, so about 600 to 700 kilo per hectare per year. Then you have this, uh, when you look at this site, uh, vegetation concern. Uh, basically cover this way. So what we need to do is to open it out and richly planting our district cup or we call it really species. Now, so we come to the second component, develop suitable site preparation method. Now, as you look at sand tilling and slime, uh, some district cup can do open planting. When you do the first component of treating the sand and slime, you can start to introduce them. And from the experience we had, these are the species that have been planted before in detailing and they are growing, all right? Uh, so uh, basically you have Aquilara uh, melacensis, they can do open planting, Agatis too, uh, Delbergia olivari too, and then uh, all these, uh, about 10, of, uh, basically more than 10 of them nearly uh, 20 of them all together. And all this can be basically open planted. Mayaya, Malayan, and, and Damit, and also vulnerable. There's only found in Penang, number 18. Then Kaya Senegalensis, exotic. Kaya Avarensis, exotic. All right? Now, all this can be open planted. So if you treat the slime and sand properly, it can be. But uh, for our purpose, if I want to go through all of them, we don't have time. But we want to uh, basically look at how they perform, uh, we sing out one, Hopia odorata. Your Hopia is planted through sand and also slime, and quite a number of them have been planted in tin tilling. And it is also a vulnerable species under this uh, IUCN release. Now, uh, this is a technique use, deep planting hole, all right? And uh, of course, when you use deep planting hole, it can plant almost every type of species that is can be open planted. All right. Uh, so when you see all this uh, gradual development, and today basically this 10 years old, formerly just barren. And uh, today you have this. Basically, on your right hand side, you can see this hopia going out. 
And this is the same palm has grown out to about four, four or five meters and hope at the bank also, right? And then uh, Acacia hybrid and Acacia arcariformis, right? And this Malabera, right? Um, uh, then that is the, the part that we saw, the 20 years old, the some you saw, uh, the, you know, the little uh, pond. Uh, these are all the plants now. Uh, they're growing very, very well. The tallest is about 25 meters. Now, when you look at Hopia dorata, it's the IUCN uh, red leaf species. So it can be open planted because uh, it has a leaf kiln temperature of about 40 degrees Celsius and uh, leaf optimum uh, temperature for photosynthesis can go to about 32, even 35 still photosynthesized, right? Uh, so this is the problem is that uh, those day, you can see all this on your left, external damages caused by uh, cow and buffalo. But one thing good about uh, Hopia is because it's polymorphic. I mean, to say that it had multiple leaders and, and then sometime uh, it grew out for another seed, right? No wonder none of them really die. So they about 90% uh, survival, right? For Hopia. And all this die and then the subsequent seedling come out again from the other side and then they continue to grow into big tree. Now uh, this 16 years old. Right. Now this is interesting. Now today uh, we normally just using the established equation uh, by uh, Chevy's and then person for the root is established. So scientific community has done that. And uh, years back, we are aware of all that, but we didn't use that. What we do, we do Brown equation, like our good friend before, uh, we will one time spend quite a lot of time with this uh, Miami's uh, colleagues, uh, Dr. An, and then uh, Pew Pew. Uh, basically, we use the same equation and we develop, develop it and we basically do destructive sampling and it's as close as 95%. Uh, so it's, it's good, but anyhow, for the comparative, for the reason. Now, if let's say one hectare, in Bido station, we don't plant any other spacing except 4.5 because we aim 500 tree per hectare, all right? Uh, so about 10%, about 45 trees, right? You take 45 trees and you measure that with uh, DBH and then you, you get uh, basically, uh, and then you, you basically substitute them into the equation and then you look at mean wood density about 775, it has a wide range. All right, and then, uh, then basically you have all this. So you mean to say whatever Hopia gain in terms of the carbon money, you can do credit, tradable, all right? And then many more, because after that, you can see Dr. Jani also has a paper. Uh, you pre she will present on the uh, basically phase two planting uh, on the digital cups, uh, IUCN release species, right? Uh, so eventually, um, TTAC not only has the red list species depository, but also a carbon sink that is tradable, right? And then when you look at uh, slime, mm, basically uh, you have to make that one to 1.5 meter and then you raise it out. You have to dig to make sure your, your, your water table level is slower down because or else you'll be get waterlogged and your plant can't grow, right? Uh, then we try to do whatever we could because we had to create a microclimate, right? So Hopi Odorata is one of the best, right? Uh, so uh, initially we have a team miner help us to do uh, very cheap everything. And so basically one tree, one plant planting, one ringgit Malaysia. And then uh, one hectare is 200 Malaysia ringgit. Now you can't get it done anymore. You are no such thing. On the right is uh, to Yawen. All right. Uh, so basically, as a whole, uh, this is how we established initially. 16 years. And now, uh, it grows 28. All right. And then you have a bit less, compared to sand, much less in terms of the uh, carbon store, in terms of 
harvestable uh, carbon dioxide equivalent uh, money, right? You can get from 4.3, right? Uh, when we look at Hopia, uh, it's big quantity, uh, more than 2,000. At this moment, we are basically mapping them. And then the next one to map is all the IUC and release species one by one, right? Uh, in our video station. And this one of the master plan that we have basically on our R&D component. Uh, so we are doing it. Uh, so basically, if you look at the carbon sink and you look at the uh, money that uh, you can get, it's about 332 ringgit per hectare per year. And uh, no, USD. And then it's 186 for slime. This was slime because the plant are very big you know, in terms of their diameter. Right. And then when we talk about uh, planting, normally people will ask a simple question. Uh, will it be naturally regenerated or the plant that you planted there? So if it can be naturally regenerated, why should you plant? You waste a lot of time and money. So we work and we survey. We have about 20 hectares of green sand tilling. And we found out basically there's no PETS, no Wrigley species, but only uh, then we use this Saturn index to characterize them. Right, to find their diversity. So basically, uh, whatever we have green on sand or so slime, uh, they sell them as seed uh, too. I mean, they still within the secondary forest condition. Uh, this is for the sand. You have uh, less than 1 to 1 1.5. All right, 1.5 is near to the uh, river reserve, near to the uh, you, you know, stream. Okay, uh, then... Uh, under the Afoco project, we do on the slime, and then we find out that uh, it has only 1.69 to 1.81, still very much a secondary forest, but a matured one, right? Uh, so, but then the species still do not have the EETS species, none of them. So it means to say that if there is no introducing of this Wrigley species, yeah, uh, they will never be there. They can never be found there. Uh, this is the conclusion that we have. And then, of course, uh, when because it all depends on the avian seed disperser, and uh, they uh, do not bring to the mammal big animals like uh, elephants or you know or big um, uh, uh, mammals that you uh, drag along those seed. Yeah, uh, but that's why bird is concerned. They don't bring anything that is. EETS. So, improved microclimate can be basically double confirmed, uh, be doubly checked, looking whether or not there is any regeneration, whether or not have a lot or not. If you have a lot, means there's good indicator, and when it has, then it's the time for enrichment planting, right? Now, we also found that these are you see the species, Dithrocarpus apterus. While they are behind us, Afoko. Basically, these are the species all introduced by two Afoko projects. One is 2011 to 2012. It's a small O. And then there's a big O, uh, which is the present one with the Thailand pellets. Yeah? Uh, so we basically 42 species all together. All right? But you see, uh, this D stands for digital cup. Right? Uh, so these are all required shade. They need to have um, sort of microclimate that within the range 30 to 60 or uh, must be less than 50 yeah, in the iridium. And then, of course, we also plant uh, soria species that are classified under IUCN as uh, least concern, right? Uh, but we still plant them because uh, I believe that there is national interest where they are all grow basically on the low land. When women all been converted, later they will become threatened. Now always that when we find that it's threatened uh, or, or we find that it's critically endangered or danger, endangered, all right? And then we say that, oh, then we try to keep them. It's too late because by then we have very little uh, population left and then genetically speaking, it's not viable anymore. And then of course, sometimes we say, look, because we have a good uh, reserving, uh, sustainable reserve and we have a v VGR, 
So eventually we can find like one of them is this uh, soria contaminensis. But then uh, how, how many times you can find uh, soria contaminensis? How many of times that you can find? You can't. So it's very rare to have it, right? So I think the best thing to do is whatever to do with uh, digital cup, whatever to do with the trade that we are using and also to be our, you know, to, to be as a seed source, the seed production area is to basically quickly take them out. All trees that are commercially important need to be kept because later when we have them, imagine they still need to find Chungang. You can't find Chungang anywhere else. Malaysia can have, Thailand can have, Southern Thailand. Uh, then and that time, the price of it will be totally different. Right now, this is strategy. Now, uh, when to send, when you want to do the ETS, you have to do a big sort of modification. You have to bring in soy, right? You have to do trench, you have to do uh, cocoa peat, right? And uh, then they can grow. But then, unfortunately, in our place, infested with wild boar, wild boar kill almost a lot, a lot of plants that is on the centilings, right? And likewise, uh, for the a focal project, we developed a technique basically called loosening to 1.5 meter. When you lose the soil to 1.5 meter, it has a great implication because it has two important uh, functions. Number one, when rainwater comes, excess water will be kept underneath there. So make sure that your contractor do the 1.5. Very, very important. And then whatever that left, all right? So uh, there will be capillary rise during the dry season from the water resource that you have kept during the raining season. So the plant will never underwater stress, right? Uh, so on sand, you have to do the trench and you do the planting and this is on slime, you did the same thing. Uh, so we come to the third part, engage good planting and uh, tending practices, right? Uh, this is very, very important. Now, so when we uh, work on thing of planting stock and distribution, uh, basically we have to uh, make sure that the planting stock deliver uh, in the evening and then in the morning early before 11, all distribution must be done, all right? And then you see they use manpower because you cannot use machinery. It was loosened when machine go in, you again cause compaction, all right? And then you have a uh, soil conditioner, all right? Uh, that's how uh, it, it works. And then you have to do it properly, make sure that everything has done. Now, I, I will not repeat what has been uh, written in the proceeding, so you can go back and see the detail of it. Huh? But definitely, whatever thing you do, you to make sure that uh, it will be three to one ratio. I mean to say your potting bags to the size, the bigger the potting, the planting hole, the better. And then what you do is you make sure that it is almost like making a grow medium similar to your potting bag so that your plant can extend the root quit in the first six months. All right? Uh, so uh, this is basically, uh, after do, you have to do the stacking because you have big seedling. Uh, in Afoko, we do all the big seedling because these are the species that are available in the market and the contract, uh, contractor. After, after that, they got our advice because we went with them to look at all the nursery and then they themselves decide uh, the species which nursery to purchase, right? Uh, so after that, uh, make sure stacking is done. I use all weather uh, wood. Basically, this is the color, green color. So it can last a long, long time, right? Uh, then after that, watering. Now, watering is very important. Because uh, first seven days, any planting, if you can continue to water until the continuum of the soil water make with the matrix between the soil and the root continuum, by then doing establish the transpiration, not in the potting bank, but the whole microsite of your root ball together with your planting hole, then your plant will survive, right? So when we do a seven horsepower um, water pump and deliver it, basically you have to do the watering for three hectares continuously in two days, non-stop. 
All right. And then after that, equally important is the circle reading. Now, why the plant, uh, the plantation need to be kept in such a clear way? Very simple because many a time we thought that when the surface, when we keep that uh, 50 centimeter or one meter uh, circle reading, then we are fine. It is not fine. The moment you have larang growing, the larang root can go lateral. And larang is larang, which is this serenica imperata. It can basically penetrate into the roots. Yeah. So when it penetrate into the roots, uh, basically it extract the um, whatever the root has. And then finally the plant will can't grow. The root basically, the feeder root go to the main root, the secondary root. Secondary root will be taken out all by the uh, lalang, the syringa imperata. Right, uh, this we have done before. We basically dig them out and find out that actually all the root of the lalang get into the, the roots of your plants. Right, uh, so you have to make it clear. Uh, then fertilizer application. Right, uh, so this is a very important thing to make sure that fertilizer, the right amount is applied. So you have to make sure you have to count the, the quantity that is needed and then Make sure, let's say it's 240 and you work out in terms of one bag how many uh, kilo and then make sure that your contractor buy and you count the number of bag that they deposited and then they mix properly, you monitor them and then make sure that they have uh, the right size of container to uh, apply on each point and that is 240 gram, right? Uh, so uh, something like that, that this man is holding this 240 gram, right? Uh, so it's one container. So you must make sure that everything done properly. So Tanning is more that when you uh, do your SOP to employ your contractor, this is under our focal project. Yeah? Uh, so that's why the plant grow very well and very, very big. Yeah? Uh, so what happened is that when you have the tanning, you have the plant growing. When the plant growing, you have your carbon stock. Right? Uh, so this is uh, a natural process. So what you have to do is to make sure your plant grow well. Right? Uh, so you have to do this uh, uh, mechanical uh, weeding to cut off whatever uh, secondary species that come into your plot. We don't want them, particularly near to the planting line. Yeah? So behind here is this uh, Ditrocarpus uh, cruciali. Uh, that's basically uh, a few months, nearly about a year or so after planting. Uh, then you have this chemical weeding to make sure the right proportion is mixed. And then after that, go and spray. And these are basically no lalang. So these are all grasses, pasplum and all that. And because if you don't spray them, lalang will come, right? And then of course, you have pests and diseases. Then uh, wild boar is the, the worst of all. It kill almost every state of it. Yeah? And then you have this, uh, you know, you, your plant growing about two to three meter, and then you come and debug uh, the lower part. And particularly happened to Ditrocarp and Ditrocarpus. One of them is Ditrocarpus uh, cartus, uh, Kringetas. Uh, then the other one is the Diabanum aromatica. Uh, they like it, they just peel and peel. Uh, and then the tree keep on dying. So, what happened on the left? Eight years old, they still kill the plant. Uh, what they need to do is just debunk 40 to 50%. And then the plant, because they have full capacity in transpiration, they dry out the stem water and the root cannot supply enough during drought season and they die. This one of them that have been caught lately. Uh, somewhere, uh, according to the photo that we have, uh, it's 9 September, right? And about 1% of the damage is by the assistant vegetation that fell, right? Uh, then, of course, there's stem borer. Now, this stem borer uh, can be treated uh, by Syndomino 2, right? Uh, so, the stem borer won't kill the plant, but it makes the plant have multiple leaders. And this has happened to Aquilaria margensis, right? So, at this moment, uh, one of uh, our research team uh, member is doing the work on it. Uh, like when uh, she, she had to basically get the insect and um, 
get on uh, to identify, uh, but we have the treatment already. Uh, so for others, it's very rare in terms of diseases. Yeah, this spot on this very rare. Right. Now, so if you look back in terms of the what we have been discussing this morning to now, uh, in TTAC, natural regeneration, 20 species. Artificial regeneration, what planted is one, two, four. All right. So you have eight from critical, uh, critically endangered, 12 endangered, one over 17, and near threatened four, and others 103. Others mean data divisions, least concern, and not in the IUCN list. Right? So when you look at planted uh, species, right, uh, then you see that this is the spread, 5.6%, 8.3%, 11.8, 2.8. Right, other 71.5. Okay. Uh, this is what found now uh, the three types of the red list are found in Pedo Station now. Now, this is the cost that involved. Now, uh, involving sand, and remember, all our projects are basically tender. It means to say uh, we open it out for public to do tender, right? Then, with whatever that we have done. So this is the money that uh, involved in handling these uh, uh, domestications of EETS. Now, of course, when you look at it, uh, we say that it's so expensive. But then we have to basically ask about if the species loss, how many species you get? Uh, and then you divide by the species and how many numbers of them? And then later, when they grow, they start to produce seeds. Yeah, so we have to look in long term. So I think it's worthwhile because in Bido Station, all the tree will be safe until ninety nine years later. Now we left another sixty over years. Now with that, I think I have finished my presentation. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ang, for your insightful sharing with us today. Um, we don't see any questions at this moment, but uh, would you be able to stay with us if there are some questions from our participants? Sure, uh, would sure. you be willing to answer them in the um, no, it's okay. Q&A box. Uh, I, I can, if any, just raise out. Let's see. Now, you, yeah, you see, okay. now, uh, you, you look at this. I want to tell you something before we leave. Now, always remember, if we don't have standing, uh, we will feel. Can you see this photo? There's this current, uh, about 14,500 plants are not tended. Tending was stopped uh, by a private company. Right, uh, so always remember if there's no tanning, particularly in the early state, it will fail definitely. Now, as you compare to a focal uh, work, um, it is uh, sustainable because it is always been done until the end, right? Uh, like this one, but this is the good note, right. Uh, you can see behind the plant are growing, right? All right, I think uh, we close here. Um, okay, there seem to be something from Lao Ka Hu. Yeah. She ah, would like yes. to know what is your recommendation in number of years of for tender for tendering of trees, I guess. Uh, uh Mr. Lau, five years, but must be a proper one. Yeah. Uh, when you plant a species, you must uh, make sure five years when the crown crucial has come, then you can stop tending. Because when uh, the crown crucial is already reached, uh, then you have the leaf litter. Uh, will form and then you have the neutron dynamic established. Is what is uh, your planting uh, distance? Uh, 
Um, what I, I guess, uh, yep, yeah, I guess you have answered, uh, Doctor, I guess you have answered Mr. Lau. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if there are any more questions to that, we will alert you. But okay. At this moment, we may we may want to move on to the next session if there are no more questions. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ang, Most welcome. for your Most welcome. for sharing with us today. Yep, it's yep, really yep, yep. good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Um, coming up next is our fourth session, which will be chaired by Dr. Ross D. Coulter, another prominent figure when we talk about civic culture and agroforestry. Dr. Rosti has obtained his Master of Science in Forest Meteorology and his PhD in Forest Civic Culture. He is currently involved in several projects, including harvesting of Eurycoma longifolia, our Malaysian uh, ginseng, or also known as Tongkat Ali, restoration and agroforestry. Do uh, Dr. Rosti also heads the agronomy cluster of the Herbs Research Grant Scheme under the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries. He's also a technical committee member of the Forest Plantation Development in the Malaysia Timber Industry Board and a member of the Malaysian Agroforestry Network for Education. Um, now, I would like to invite Dr. Rosti to chair the session four on plantation development of red list species. Dr. Rosti, you may please. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Moderator Dr. Ho, for your kind uh, introductions. Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Uh, welcome to the general uh, webinar session four, entitled Plantation Development for Red List Species. Uh, as you all know, plantation is one of the important components that can conserve the red list in future. So that's why uh, uh, plantation involved, especially on the uh, uh, establishment new uh, uh, way forward, especially on the red list. Okay. Uh, I'll be saying as chairman, I will really wish to thank the organizer for the giving me the opportunity to chair this session. Uh, just for the, the gentle reminder to all the presenters, each presenter will be given 15 minutes for uh, your presentations. Uh, for participants, please post any question to each of the presenter. Uh, you can use the Q&A Q box or you can wait until uh, q and session at the end of the uh, uh, session four. Okay, today we have five presentation, uh, all the presentation followed by eight posters uh, and will be displayed after the q and session. Uh, there's a minor amendment for the program, posters uh, presentation will be displayed right after the q and session. If you have any question about the poster presentation, you can, can directly email to the corresponding author, okay? Uh, I think we shall we start now. Uh, now uh, we have a first presenter, Mr. Ameh, who's going to talk uh, growth and yield of Chengal, a uh, new Bani campus planted at Bukit Hari, uh, film campus uh, Selangor. Uh, Mr. Ameh is currently uh, is a research officer uh, at Civic Culture Unit Forest Plantation Program by Tech in Frim. He obtained a Master in Science of Forest Management, management uh, from UPM, uh, Field of Expertise of Forest of Plantation Civil Culture, a current project, uh, Plantation of Forest Timber Species and Bamboo in SPF Jelly, consultant for FGV, uh, for the uh, Felda Global Venture and uh, Land and General Estate for Bamboo Planting, consultant for DBKL for the establishment of lowland tropical forest at Kerinci, Kerinci. Uh, other experience, uh, he served as plantation manager of, for, uh, for oil palm and rubber in KLK estate, uh, replanting of Bukit Hari with indigenous plantation species. The third one is rehabilitation of degraded ex mining land with bamboo at Paya Indah and Chini. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, the flight is yours. You are given 15 minutes, Mr. Ahmed. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rosby. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, hi, a very good morning to all participants. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rosby, and thank you, uh, Dr. Ho Wan Man, uh, for the introduction. Okay. Okay, today I'm going to talk about um, the planting of uh, slow growing species, which is um, 
Chengal, uh, this is our local name in Malaysia, near Balonacapus hemiae, uh, the scientific name. Okay, this species uh, is uh, implanted in frame. Okay, uh, just to share our experience um, of planting uh, Chengal in uh, Bukit Lagong Forest Reserve in frame. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, as you all know, um, Chengal is actually a species um, endangered uh, in our IUCN red list uh, uh, species. Okay, it was found naturally in, in Peninsula Malaysia, southwest to Singapore, uh, and northern part of Thailand. Uh, however, it was believed that it was extinct in Singapore. And um, some parts of Thailand. The species has been overexploited uh, and it was very poor regeneration and it is needed uh, in situ conservation. Okay. The, the lox is highly priced and durable uh, and very normally is, is very resistant to termite attack and fungal infection. And the price is, I mean, 30 times uh, higher than acacia mangium. As you all know that uh, this species uh, was not allowed to be exported anymore. Uh, it was prohibited uh, to be exported because, uh, because of its scarcity. Okay, next slide. Okay, I'll show you some picture of uh, channel trees. Uh, See that is the largest tengah trees uh, in Trangganu, which is uh, east coast of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. Okay, and uh, this is uh, uh, the largest trees. It was believed it was uh, each maybe at one thousand years old. Okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, Neo Balanukapos Hanyai. Okay, uh, as you can see, this species is a family of Dictrocapos, Dictrocapos here. It was originally described as uh, Balanukapos Hanyai. Okay, uh, the flower of the genus was similar to Hopia, but having wingless fruits. Uh, the germination of uh, Balanukaposenia is showing of its similarity with uh, Diabanops and uh, Shoria. Okay, as you can see that the seed is similar to uh, what we call uh, Shoria, Hopia, but uh, without wings. Okay, uh, next. Okay. Um, in frame, uh, we have planted this species uh, back in 1932. Okay. Uh, there are uh, concern for the potential loss of uh, the desired species it was expressed in Hill, uh, written in 1900. Okay. So frame have initiated uh, the planting of uh, this species uh, in field 11 in 1932 which is still exists today. But unfortunately, the records of performance and survival and growth was what was not well documented. Okay, as a continuation of the previous effort, uh, we have uh, established uh, another plot uh, in 2011 in field 48, uh, Bukit Lagung Forest Reserve. Uh, Bukit Lagung Forest Reserve is an area which is um, uh, we we do all our trials uh, for plantation species okay it was uh, formerly an experimental planting site for various exotic subtropical pinus uh, we have pinus caribia we also have pinus insularis and araucaria uh, araucaria hastenai or kinky pine and araucaria kanyamihiae which is hook pine it was established uh, in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Okay, in 1997, we have um, harvested 
part of uh, Bukit Hari or Bukit Lagong. And uh, only left uh, few 51, few 50 and 49. Uh, and we have uh, planted uh, with our local species, uh, which is uh, cons consists of uh, ditro carp and also non ditro carp species. Okay, the purpose of planting uh, Bukit Lagong is for uh, field testing, and um, we have to we have to study the potential of uh, this uh, local species for plantation. Okay, can okay, move to the next slide, please. Okay, this is some picture of uh, Bukit Lagong. Uh, you can see in 1965 uh, the stages. It was all planted with pinus, Arucaria and pinus. Okay. Uh, in 1965, in 2012, uh, you can see that um, we have uh, planted with our local species, but uh, on the top of the hill, still uh, pinus species is still there. And the latest picture is uh, in. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, my internet is not so stable. Okay. Uh, okay, can you move to the next slide, please? Okay. Our site is uh, is in Bukit Lagung uh, frame. The site mean daily temperature ranges from 27 to 32 degrees Celsius. I uh, mean, annual rainfall we have around 2,000 to 2,900 millimeter. This is very high rainfall here. Uh, we have slopes, slopes of around 10 to 15. Uh, some of the area may exceed, but our planting site is, uh, is quite gentle, uh, only 10 to 15 degrees. Some of the site we have around 25 to 30 degrees. Okay, the area is formerly planted with pinus and arocaria, and the site file was uh, identified as our local name Rendam series. Uh, the Rendam series soil is actually derived from uh, granite pattern material. Okay, um, the soil is slightly acidic, which is around 3.7 to 4.1. And the clay content ranges from 31 to 55% of clay. Very well drained soil and good permeability. Okay, the soil is quite good uh, for Malaysian standards. Okay, you can move next slide, please. Okay, our planting stocks, our seeds we have collected from uh, field 11, uh, the formerly planted in 1932. Okay, we we have um, take the seeds from uh, these plots and. Um, bring it to the nursery and we sown it in nursery bed uh, and upon germination we have uh, moved it to the uh, polybags uh, potted uh, the size of the polybag is uh, eight inches by 12 inches okay the, the the seedling was standard in the nursery for eight months under 50 percent shades and another two months is uh, we have removed the shades meaning that there are no shades for another two months, meaning that uh, it was standard in the nursery for 10 months. The reason why we um, remove the shade is uh, to acclimatize, uh, to acclimatize the seedlings before uh, transplanted to the field. Uh, it's actually to hardening it, okay? Uh, we prepare land, uh, was open, uh, the land half a hectare, half 0 0.5 hectare. Uh, the dimension is 50 by 100 meter, uh, which removal of all the trees and shrubs. Okay, the surrounding plants uh, at site at that time is less than two meter tall. Okay, as you can see the picture there, uh, the seedlings, the color of the leaves of uh, Neobalanocarpus hemia is uh, green, but the young leaf is maroon in color. Okay, it's very beautiful plants. Okay. okay, next slide, please. As you can see the planting, okay, we have planted 300 seedlings in, in our site. Okay, 
the pumping distance is 4 by 3 meter, which is equivalent to the density of 833 uh, plants per hectare. Okay, this is our initial planting density. Uh, the size of the seedling is around 0 0.45 meter, is around half a meter. Uh, we took only uh, plants uh, which are healthy and also with the same size, uh, preferably the same size. Okay. And next slide, please. Okay. Um, the measurement of uh, the trees were done uh, at six months interval, okay, uh, in the first year and then 12 months afterwards, okay. Uh, the parameter measure are total height and diameter at price height, okay. The diameter at price height we took at 1.3 meter, okay. Before that, we took uh, the basal diameter, okay. And then we do the um, we do the, the clearings of uh, any unwanted uh, grasses and also the vegetations. Uh, they were cleared mechanically using a brush cutter. Uh, and the frequency of maintenance work uh, varies uh, in average of four times in the world. Usually, we can find. Uh, Imperata, Salandrica, all along, uh, and also some uh, grasses, uh, and also we also have uh, Mikania, and we have to remove uh, the climbers and also uh, Imperata, and then we didn't use any uh, chemi chemical spraying, uh, we only use uh, mechanical uh, maintenance using uh, what we call you brush cutting, so brush cutter. Okay. Okay, next slide. Okay, as you can see, this is some picture of the stand at age uh, six to ten years. Okay, as you can see, um, the leaves of the the leaves and the stems of the plants. Okay. Uh, you can see that the the trees uh, looks very healthy. Okay, it was well maintained. The plot is really well maintained, and uh, the 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 canopy is quite tight. Okay, when I observe uh, the trees from uh, the natural stand in the forest, okay, there is slight difference. Uh, in canopy structure compared to what we plant here, maybe all because of the uh, the sunshine, okay, because of the openings, okay. We consider this site as large opening, okay. Um, but if you plant it under planting, uh, maybe maybe with uh, seventy percent shade, okay, the tree will look different, okay. However. Uh, it was a successful planting uh, using this method. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Mr. Amin, you have five more minutes, Mr. Amin. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, you can see that the growth of these uh, plants, uh, these trees, at 10 years old, you can gain um, DBH of uh, 6.35 centimeter mean DBH of 6.35 centimeter and a mean height of 5.11. Okay, however, the difference or the variation is quite high. You can have a 13.5 uh, cm diameter and 2.4 centimeter. However, you can see from six to 10 years old, the trees um, gradually increases in diameter and height. Okay, the survival rate is around 70%. It is considered very good for uh, the trocar species. Okay, next. And this is the graph. You can see it gradually increases in diameter and size uh, in each year. Okay, next. Okay, the result of the species uh, uh, shows slow but consistent increase in diameter and height from age 0 to 10 years. Mean diameter size of 6.35 cm and mean height of 5.11 meter is gained 
uh, in age 10 years old, which is uh, equivalent to 0 0.64 mean annual increment in diameter and 0 0.54 meter a year for height. The survival rate of 10 gelagum is 69 percent at age 10, which is considered high. However, Fox Forty stated that uh, the growth will take place after uh, growth will be, be more rapid. Uh, in 25 centimeter diameter, maintain until three is 80 centimeter diameter. Okay, meaning that maybe at 30 or 40 years old, it will, it will, it will gain more sizes. Okay, and however, Francis Ern has indicated that he got uh, a diameter growth of 0 0.96 centimeter for a 40 year old plants in, in, in frame. Okay, uh, which is uh individual trees not uh, uh, uh the whole plots okay okay and hiroshi in 2003 has done planting uh, in acacia mangrove plantation and the survival was lower which is 30 percent uh, with the opening of uh, they're using the opening of 33.3 meter and 18.5 meter which is said to be suitable for this species Okay, they plant uh, this species under the acacia mangium, uh, which is uh, they have thin two rows of acacia mangium and plant with uh, uh, this species. And some they use four rows, and it was a success in, 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 in this study. Okay, next. Okay, uh, it's not this species is known for premium wood quality, it's not like uh, low wood quality, and we know that in our lifetime, maybe 50 years, uh, we, we still cannot uh, harvest this wood, okay? Establishing permanent plots of this species outside or away from its natural habitat is very important to provide a protective cultivation for conservation strategy to ensure that this species ultimately survive, okay, from the wild. This study shows that the proper techniques and management, uh, these species can be successfully planted. Okay, next. Okay, with that, I conclude my presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ame, for the, your excellent presentation. Uh, for thank you also for sharing about the growth and the performance of planted new uh, 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 or, or we call it. Uh, uh, Chengal, okay. Uh, so please be patient with us. So we, you, uh, you can answer straight away uh, using the QA box, or at the end, I will I, I read the, uh, the question for you. Right, so Mr. Ame. Uh, so we have a second presentation. Uh, now we invite uh, Mr. Wasan um, Chanda Ing. Uh, he will talk on the growth and carbon stock of the Trocapus. Uh, Trees planted on abandoned mining area in Panganga Forest Research Station. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wasan Chanda Ng is a uh, researcher at Faculty of Forestry, uh, Kasasat University. He obtained his Master of Science of Forestry, uh, Field of Expertise of Forest Plantation, Forest Carbon Sequestration, and Forest Rehabilitation. Okay, Mr. Wasan, the floor is yours. Mr. Wasan, you are given 15 minutes, Mr. Wasan. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Chairman. Today, I will present to our research. My research is a coal and carbon stock lip solo carb tree planted on mining area in Panga Forestry Research Station. My team is a uh, author, three person, Dr. Jesana, Dr. Ladawan, and uh, Ms. Punyanut Amon. Bowen Wong from Kasesa University. Next presentation. Uh, mining operation have severely impacted the environment, particularly the soil property, resulting to very low soil nutrient level, with strong acid soil pH. The soil structure become unsuitable to planting this species. In addition, Mining also destroy existing vegetation and uh, restoration the previous remain 
my area has been <coughs> sorry undertaken on many sites using plantation approved, but the species and composition are low value. Next, please. Next. Uh, the survival and growth rate of seedling depend on the tea species, environment factor, sea cultural practice, the recovery of the forest structure, diversity up and function, the restoration of my our area using indigenous tea species has been going on a long time. Moreover, the selection for such decayed land and appropriate management in Intervention for nursery, such as thinning and such important steps need to promote the growth of native tree. And the objective of my research for the selected uh, little local tree was suitable in abiding abandoned mining area at Panga, quality research station, and uh, estimate carbon stock of little local tree were planted in a bending mining area. Next. Uh, the experimental pot was located in a uh, Bedon Tin Mai at Panga province, located in the uh, southern of Thailand. The province accolade the landing season during April to November and die season during December to May. It means annual land for 3,600 mm per year and mean Temperature is a uh, 27 Celsius. Next. Uh, the soil in the area is mostly sandy soil and high bone density and very really low soil nutrient level. Next. Uh, next, please. Um, my next thought is the uh, Use completely random my random my box design. Uh, we select ten six species. Uh, little carpet alata, little carpet gasilis, hopia odorata, cholia casti decima, cholia lockbergi eye, and palasolia stellata. Uh, we planted spacing T per T under a car, under a car, Siamangium plantation. Next. We'll collect data of the uh, diameter of root collar, diameter of the high, total high, and survival rate. And then we use uh, alumni equation of the uh, Okawa. Uh, to estimate a book and convert conversion factor 0 0.47 for uh, estimate carbon carbon stock of a uh, little carb T. Next please. The result is a uh, survival rate is the uh, highest on uh, Cholia, Cassidetma, and Hopia odorata. And uh, please. Uh, up picture is the comparative of the survival list of the uh, pot is the, the open pot is the, uh, the low survival list. Next please. And the uh, diameter of blue color is the highest on Cholia Lockworthy eye. And uh, follow or oh, follow is the uh, Hopia odorata. Next, please. As is same thing as a uh, on the meter of six, this species is a high end, uh, Cholia lobogi eye and Hopia odorata again. Next, please. And then when uh, Estimate of uh, the high, uh, the high is the uh, Cholia Lockworthy eye again. And estimate of uh, carbon stock of six 
this one has to be she painted this uh, all the same ten is uh, the highest on Sholia Lombok Ki I. Uh, Sholia Lombok Ki I uh, have carbon stock on stem uh, 24 and branch uh, uh, 5 and leaf 1.06. Uh, next, please. And the con con conclusion of my research, Cholia Lobogi I should be considered for restoring abandoned mining because wood, gold, and high carbon stock. And mining area rehabilitation with Litolokati should be planted with acacia mancium as nut tea. And make plantation of fat growing tea and little carb tea should be recommended for rehabilitating the gate area for improve for layer structure and diversity and for giving ecological service. Thank you for attention. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Wasan, for your excellent presentation. Uh, for your information, uh, film also promoting uh, rocks bagai one of the potential species uh, for the forest planting program in future. Right. So uh, thank you, Mr. Wasan, again. Uh, so we have the third presenter here. The third presenter is the... Mr. Ahmad Fauzi Muhammad Sharif. He will talk on the conservation of threatened species through establishment of Jumplasm Bank. Uh, Ahmad Fawzi Sharif now currently uh, serve as manager at Frim uh, Mata Ai Research Station. Uh, he's obtained diploma in agriculture in 1985 from University of uh, Agriculture Malaysia of uh, uh, Sarawak, a Bachelor of Agriculture Science from University of Agriculture Serdang, uh, field of expertise, nursery techniques and plant uh, propagation. A current project involved is nursery management and practices. Number two, conservation and of threatened dutokap and non dutokap tree species. Productions of quality clones of Athenospora crispa. Uh, the fourth one is micro propagation of Zelocarpus rumpiae. Uh, and the last one is planting of endemic tree species in log over forest in Bukit Bintang Forest Preserve Perlis. So other experience is uh, he served as a team consultant for the project Tanaman Pukuk Nyere uh, Mengkuang uh, under UNDP uh, project. Uh, consultant uh, agriculture, uh, virus agriculture for development of herbal and biotechnology products cluster in Cegapara. Project leader for the National Digital Cups Jemplasm Bank under uh, Institute Tanah Negara. Uh, so, Mr. Fozzi, the floor is yours, Mr. Fozzi. We are given 15 minutes, Mr. Fozzi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Rosdi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. Selamat pagi. Uh, the title of my presentation is Conservation of Threatened Tree Species Through Establishment of Germplasm Bank. My name is Ahmad Fauzi co-author with uh, Aini Izati, Ahmad Suhaimi, Zainal Abu and Zainal Ahmad. We are from uh, Frame Research Station Police. Okay, uh, the content of our presentation is uh, introduction, uh, project description, material methods, result and discussion, uh, and last is the conclusion. Okay. Population of three species that are cl uh, classified as threatened need to be effectively managed and maintained in ex in situ and ex situ conservation as planned in the Malaysian National Strategy Plan for conservation published in 2009. Threatened species are defined as any species which are vulnerable to being at risk of endangerment in the near future. The establishment of a uh, germplasm bank is one of the methods 
for at situ conservation. Okay, this conservation method is widely applied by government and non-government entities toward achieving the target nine, in which 90% of threatened plant species in ex situ conservation collection within the country and 10% of them include included in recovery and restoration programs. The IUCN Red List of Threatened Species was which was established in 1964 and the Malaysian Plant Red List or MPRL version 3.12021 defined as all species that are facing a risk of extinction as threatened. This category include vulnerable VU, endangered EN, critically endangered CR. Okay, project description is a, a project title, assignment of germplasm bank or pemantapan bank germplasm under RMK 11 was carried out in uh, 2017 to 2020 to undertake the issue. The objective was to collect 100 species of potential genetic resource for conservation, production of new cultivar and authenticated uh, raw materials. Okay, methodology, methodology. Plant checklists are based on uh, on free um, nation plant red list version. Last time was version 2010. About uh, 95 numbers of threatened dicrocarp species in Peninsula Malaysia. That is uh, 15 uh, critically endangered, 35 uh, endangered, and 42 vulnerable were. Were, 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 um, we were put into our target. Uh, planning on, on a collection are based on previous uh, survey or preliminary existing phen phenology report from in-house mon monitoring, forest health and conservation, forest uh, biodiversity department, uh, forest research institute Malaysia, and forest department of Peninsula Malaysia. And also, we we have this uh, inside the Facebook got this uh, uh, word it up page. We also look into that also as a reference for us. Okay, species collected are in the form of seed and wilding from firm campus, firm research station. and uh, a state forest reserve and recreational forest in Peninsula Malaysia. Seed, uh, and seedling in polybags from reliable source such as uh, uh, from state forest department nurseries and also Frim Kepung uh, Division Nursery also we, we also get from that. Lah. Information and that or data such as uh, plant identification, geolocation, uh, uh, area or, or area collected, ported date, source collection, for example, source of collection, for example, uh, seed, wilding, or established uh, planting material in polybag, we also collect. The information will be used in, in uh, live, um, in live uh, asset management and tree certification. As you can see, this one, uh, we also use MyBees for reference. Eh? MyBees is Malaysian Biodiversity Information System. Okay, what are the tools used for seed collection? Uh, we use uh, advanced uh, a catapult, nylon uh, bending, cord, hand glove, uh, nylon PE rope, diameter tape, 
GPS device, binoculars and SKTS. Okay, this is the uh, instrument that we use for height measurement. That is a high glove vertex 4. Okay, for welding collection, we use, uh, uh, as you can see in the picture, air pump, hydrogel, seal plastic, water sprayer, knife, kitchen scissors, bam bamboos, bamboo stick, uh, stationaries, uh, notebook, uh, uh, garden bag, uh, garbage bag, kitchen, uh, kitchen tissue, masking tape and plant tape. For the purpose of uh, uh, wadding collection. Okay, uh, I will uh, touch a bit on uh, germination. Uh, this is a, a cengal, neobilatness, help me. Uh, we did, uh, previous we did the seed collection and the germination rate, uh, rate is uh, 82%. Within a one month period, we use uh, sand, sand, sand bag for germination. This cengal uh, uh, is a uh, is a uh, anti yeah uh, neutralizer for uh, Malaysian plant red list version two zero two one. Okay, we also did the oversized uh, welding collection. As you can see, this one is a uh, hopia fera is uh, endemic to Perlis. Uh, we took from uh, Taman Negeri Perlis, Wang Kelian Perlis. As you can see, the the plants, you you can't see, there's no uh, side uh, root or hairy root, just one single root. Uh, this is a challenge for us. Uh, this we, we call a uh, large, uh, large, uh, the large uh, height of welding. Uh, we took around uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 meter height is uh, around one to two feet height of uh, wildings and uh, the the result is good eh? i cannot see the this one what eh? okay uh, the result is good eh? i think 25 uh, percent eh? okay uh, as a methodology, methodology planting material are germinated for seed, germinated for wilding, we potted and raised inside the nursery at a free mata air research station accordingly with their requirement to an appropriate size of at least two feet before planting. Here is the mata air research st uh, st station, is uh, northern near to uh, Thailand near to Padang Besar, also Thailand. We have Padang Besar, Thailand and Padang Besar, Perlis. The climate, our the Perlis, the climate is a mon tropical monsoon. It's different from uh, uh, Peninsular Malaysia, a bit different because we are just close by to the Thailand. Most of the month of the year are marked by significant rainfall with a short dry season. That is, uh, the dry season is on in uh, January to February. The average uh, temperature is around 26.9 and the annual uh, precipitation is uh, 1,952 millimeters annually. Koppen Geiger climate classification is AM. And guess what? Perlis, Chupik in Perlis is the hottest place in Malaysia. There is 40.1 degree uh, Celsius in was recorded in 1998. Okay, uh, infrastructure, infrastructure, we have this uh, uh, to to accommodate the process. Uh, we have a uh, uh, working shade, accommodation shade, greenhouse, planting. Uh, area, planting bed, multi-purpose house and main uh, store. Multi-purpose house, 
where we did we uh, we can convert into acclimation house propagation house or germination house where we need it we need it okay result and discussion a total of 78 uh, species were collected during the four years duration priorities are given to uh, uh, ditrocarp family to achieve 100 species and uh, 20, uh, 72 ditrocarp were collected balance of uh, six belong to other families the collection consists of 31 triton species including cr en and vu and others are uh, in other category based on um, nation plan right list 3.1 2021. Okay, this is an example of a CR, uh, critically endangered species that we have collected. This is a Hopia odorata or Marawan, wilding collected from Coral Reserve Panti Kota Tinggi Johor. Uh, its uh, uh, conservation status is a uh, CR on two lists. Two lists. Uh, UI, IUCN and Malaysian Planet List. Uh, this is the uh, endemic plant to Pulau Pinang. This is a uh, Hopia Bracterata brook. Uh, this one is uh, locally named, uh, known as uh, Marawa Ungu. Wadding collection from Taman Negeri Pulau Pinang. Okay, we have also Batika Yichongi seed collection from Forest uh, Reserve Sungai Lalang Flango is a CR also. Uh, Vatika Flavida Resak Padi from uh, Sri Skanda Pera is a uh, CR. Okay, uh, for EN or endangered, uh, endangered category, we have this Ditrokap Tampenes or kering asap collected from uh, forest reserves Sungai Bantam uh, Labis Johor Vatika Adoramanina Vatika uh, Adoramanina from the list of Malaysian Plan Red List uh, 2010 were listed in red, red species eh? uh, after uh, they revised they put uh, the category in, in the endangered species Okay, uh, native, uh, this this one is a uh, green layang, the Trocarpus sarawakanensis, collect from uh, Foral Reserve Jerangau Terengganu, it's an endangered species. Okay, uh, for vulnerable, we collected also uh, Marawan uh, Mata Kucing, Hopia Johorensis, wilding collection from uh, Forest uh, Reserve Ulu Sadali Johor, uh, also, uh, on my right hand side is the Hopia Health Ferry, Giam in Tabukit, wilding collection from Frim Kepong. It's a uh, VU. Uh, if you use the uh, nation plan red list. Uh. Okay, re result and discussion. A total number of Five hundred, uh, four hundred and seventy-five numbers of ditrocarp and non-ditrocarp seedling, which included twenty-seven threatened and thirty-five other categories, have been planted on the ground in compartments seventeen and twenty-three in Mata Ae Forest Reserve, with a planting distance of four times four meter. Planting was done in rainy season, August to December to ensure optimum survival. Maintenance of plot were done periodically as in civiculture practice. Okay, this is the area where we uh, planted the species. Eh? As you can see, uh, the number one is compartment 23. We planted on 5th of November 2020. It's uh, 28 species. Um, number two is compartment 17. Uh, we planted uh, 20 species. Total number is 40. 
in uh, 9 of November 2020 and uh, the third one is compartment uh, 23rd the main uh, germ plasm plot we planted uh, 20 species is a total amount of 30 360 numbers of plants we planted in uh, 3rd of August 2021 and the final uh, it's not final actually maybe we plant again uh, it's a, a subplot we call it Madeka plot uh, we planted 47 species in uh, 27 August and 15 of September 2021 the total species planted is uh, 62 uh, total species and the total, total threatened uh, species is 27 species. It, uh, we use this um, Malaysian plant red list. It's not IUCN. If we use IUCN, maybe around 50 plus or more. 50, 50, 50 plus uh, uh, threatened species. The total number of uh, plant planted is uh, 475 numbers. Okay, this is a picture of the uh, main plot. Eh? Plot uh, uh, compartment 2023. 20, 20, uh, in front of you is the Patika Yichongi. You can see the difference. Eh? The, the, the leaf is a bit broader, longer. So this is... Uh, okay, this is the list of the species planted and the category. In compartment Merdeka, we planted uh, 17 plus 30. You can see also the list on your right hand side. Okay, this is the sub plot of 23. We planted Mr. Fozzi, one seven. Minute, Mr. Fozzi. Yes. Two more minutes. Okay, okay. All right. Up in this one, we we planted sapling. Eh? It's a two two meters high. Uh, this one, the 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 mortality is twenty five percent. Because we planted in November, I think no, November. Eh? It's close to the drought season. Okay, this is a compartment seventeen, uh, twenty. Okay, the successful of a jump plasm bank. Uh, depends on adequate information, proper planning, education, collaboration with relevant government and non-government agency. Decision to use resource tools method are based on plant uh, are based on type of planting material to be collected and site as well accessibility. Proper planning of planting materials that means you have to uh, transportation and storage. A good uh, practice management will be uh, will produce healthy planting material good silviculture practice will ensure uh, three grows in well in field last but not least matai forest reserve will, will benefit eh, from this project to become monsoon tropical forest rich with the trocar threatened species we would like to acknowledge the ministry of uh, energy and uh, resource Ketsa, uh, forest research institute forest department project uh, co-workers and others who have contributed their time and ideas to this project um, uh, thank you for kind, your kind attention uh, before we leave uh, I would like to show share with you a video I think uh, Mr. Chairman can I share a video uh, you have to do enough time to Fozzi because I, uh, uh, we are running uh, behind time so okay so okay lah it's, I think that, that's all yeah that's all for this presentation thank you very much okay, thank Assalamualaikum you. warahmatullahi welcome thank you Mr. Fozzi for your excellent presentation and congratulations for being preserved uh, 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 red list species uh, especially on the uh, SPF Matai Matai uh, substation. Right, so we move to uh, next speaker. Uh, the first speaker is Mr. Muhammad Zamak Shari Mustafa. He will talk on the uh, DCMS analysis of agarwood using different types of inoculums in Malaysia plantation. Uh, currently, uh, Mr. Muhammad Zamak is a senior assistant director. Uh, Malaysian Timber Industrial Board. 
He's obtained uh, his degree uh, of forestry science uh, in 19, uh, from UPM in 19, uh, 2007, is now currently pursuing his Master of Science, a uh, Master of Forestry Science in UPM. Field of expert is a national subject matter expert of Agawood Bamboo and Stand Development. A current project involves Agawood Industry Development Action Plan 2011 to 2021, a Bamboo Industry uh, De Development Action Plan uh, 2021 to 2030. Uh, membangun strategi pemulihan dan menambah baik kualiti hasil spesies akilaria terpilih uh, secara restari di Malaysia. Hybrid project with uh, tenaga hijau penggunaan kayu tempatan ke arah industri mapan. Uh, project automated visual inspection bagi pemeriksaan warna dan kecacatan ke arah smart manufacturing untuk industri kayu di Malaysia. Other than that, uh, other contribution or experience A spore is conducted the spore uh, micromorphology and anatomy of fern genus Hesopteris uh, uh, in Peninsula Malaysia. And number two, notes on distribution and ecology of Calaria uh, in Malaysia. Number three, effects of organic fertilizer application of Gigantolia scotinae, wildings, and eek biomass. Number four, identification and isolation of potential DNA markers for Calaria malacensis via representational difference, difference analysis. Number five, agarwood production of Aquilaria malacensis using various inoculants and techniques. Number six is trends in the agarwood industry of Peninsula Malaysia. Okay, Mr. Mazama, the floor is yours. Mr. Mazama, you're going to 50 minutes. Right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosli, for a brief introduction of me. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear me? I think it's okay for you. All right, so thank you, Frim, for, for organizing this regional webinar. And uh, uh, this is my opportunity to spread out my research study on the Aquilaria species, I think, next. So the title of my, my uh, research are uh, next. Uh, the GCMS analysis of agarwood using a different type of inoculums in Malaysia plantation. So this is a collaborative work between uh, me, myself, uh, under the Faculty of Forestry and Malaysia Team Industry Board, Faculty of Forestry UPM, and UPSI, UPSI, uh, Department of Chemistry and Department of Biology of UPSI. Next. So this is my outline of presentation. I'll uh, lay out some introduction, uh, cover up some objective of the study, materials and methods that including included in, in my research, results and discussion, some acknowledgement and references. Next. So this is some brief introduction of all about Karas and Agawood. So let me uh, give some brief uh, overview. Uh, the tree itself we known as Karas. Uh, so Karas tree belongs to the Timeliaceae family under the genus of Aquilaria. We got five species in Malaysia, where out uh, 22 species all over the world. Uh, this is the only tree that could produce the, the aromatic wood that we call as agarwood. Uh, while the agarwood uh, is a product or the byproduct uh, occurs in the karas tree. So basically the karas tree is white in color. Uh, so when it turn out into agarwood, they will turn to other than white color. So the more darker, it can be a more expensive and a better grade. Next. So these are some overview of our industry in Malaysia. Up to date, we got around 238 companies uh, that registered under the CITES Act 686. We, uh, we cover up to 2,529 hectares with 2.35 million trees. Uh, we got around 12 companies uh, registered under the Act of 105 as exporter or importer of agarwood. Uh, we only exported 1.8 million last year due to the pandemic COVID uh, uh, drastically drop of our export value. Uh, previous year, 2019, we exported around 9 million. So it's almost, almost 80 to 90% drop last year due to the pandemic COVID. Uh, we got around 18 company deal with Agawood Essential Oil producer, uh, plantation that, reg uh, reg uh, sorry, nursery that registered under this X686 is around 6 Six sector only, 
and we got more than 50 companies in Malaysia that produce a uh, product of agarwood. Next. So these are the main characteristics, as I mentioned, how you want to differentiate the Aquilaria species from other species. If you try to tear out the leaf, it will have some, uh, we, it will have uh, the characteristic of fibrous looks from the leaf. But you try to tear it out with your own hand, your bare hand, definitely you will get this characteristic. So these are the main characteristics of Aquilaria species. Next. So these are the agar wood uh, product from wood chip, sawdust, wood block, wood piece, uh, and other materials product from agar wood. Next. So the objective of the study are to determine two things. One, the chemical composition of all essential oil. And we could conclude the best inoculum based on the average of accumulated rig of agar wood resin. So this study I'm studying on two items. One, the study on the chemical composition of the essential oil. Uh, another, another part is the uh, average uh, data that we uh, accumulate from the agar wood resin due, through the inoculation uh, process. Next. So materials and method. Uh, the location of the research were done at Empangan Juice, just in Melaka. Uh, we got about 50 hectares of aquilera trees being planted by MTIB and UPM Melaka and Malaka Sisabahat back in 2008 and 2009. We got around 40,000 matched karas tree. So we selected only uh, same size of tree, which is 20 centimeter diameter, same species, aquilera malakensis. Uh, and we select five companies of in the inoculation based on our previous inoculation research in 2012. So the company are Biobenua Technologies Shambahat. Uh, they will be uh, uh, labeled as A, Sensen Agawood, B, Red Claw Aqua and Herb, C, Inoculum Garu Biotech, D, Itling Garu Shambahat E. So these five companies are the one uh, they are doing the inoculation techniques, the inoculation process, and we study on the yield of the product obtained from this study. Next. So the inoculation process, uh, there are multiple techniques. They are using it. Next. These are the illustration of the inoculation process. Uh, there are techniques that are using a pressurized cam jet. There are techniques that are using a dripping bag. They are using a small hole with bamboo sticks. And there are techniques using a bottle inducement. So those five companies uh, using a different techniques, uh, different approach, different inoculum. So we study based on the uh, product itself next. So the harvesting process procedure will cut the tree into uh, three feet, every logs. And then we have uh, authorization from Jabatan Botanan, Forestry Department to uh, transfer the tree from the plantation to the factory next. So we separate the agar wood using a multiple uh, various tools, uh, carving tools. Next. Uh, these are the process that included in, uh, under the uh, agar wood essential oil, which are the number one, we only use a lower grade of uh, wood chip to process the agar wood essential oil. Then we'll chip it into a small portion uh, due to uh, next, we will grind it. So if we grind it in a big uh, uh, chip, it will damage the chipper. So we'll chop into smaller piece, then we'll go for, uh, gr we'll grind it into a powdery form. Then number four step, we'll soak into, under, into the water for at least one week, next before we process it under the, uh, uh, we process it on the hydro distillation process. Next. And finally, we got the yield, production yield. And then we isolate the essential oil and water. Next. And these are the sum of the results and discussion under this study. So comparison of agar formation, as I mentioned, as I label it out, A, B, C, D, E. So we can see the induced uh, inoculum with A develop a dark brown resinous wood form. Uh, the B companies 
uh, they, they produce a lighter brown. Uh, however, if we compare uh, B and A, A are producing uh, slightly higher. However, the tree in induced with uh, inoculation or inoculum under the, the company of E only produce a very minimum uh, agar wood. Next. So these are the techniques versus production uh, table. So company A using a pressurized cam jet, uh, they can produce 1.5 kilogram uh, average yield of agar wood per tree. They can, post, uh, they can obtain 1.5 kilogram high grade and lower grade is around 16 kilo. Uh, company B or inoculum B using a dripping system, ICU. The resin is very low, only 200 gram. Uh, the lower low grade also is very low, 1.2 kilogram. Then inoculum C using a bamboo stick and dripping. Uh, these are the considered as the best inoculum based on the average of acclimated yield of agar wood resin, is, uh, they can manage to get around six kilogram of uh, high grade and 16 kilogram of lower grade of garu, agar wood. Uh, company D using bottle dripping system, same as company E, but we can see what company D can, pros can produce slightly higher low grade of agar wood if compared to company E. Next. So under this uh, study, we test the oil that we produce. Uh, we want to see the GCMS result. Uh, so those uh, five uh, wood that we process is totally uh, uh, is is by me personally. So we control the 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 error. So these are the GCMS result. Next. So overall, there are 28 compounds that are related to agarwood were identified in five different essential oil. So some of it uh, were detected in all tested essential oil, such as uh, listed. Uh, so some common compound essential oil only appeared in particular sample, such as agarofuran, agarospirol, udismol, neurolin, and bisabolol. So this finding showed that there are no significant difference in the abundance of marker compound in each essential oil. Uh, this might due to two item, uh, two uh, cause. Number one is uh, we use a same uh, procedure, which are uh, via hydro distillation technique. Uh, and then number two, uh, we control the result by uh, make by making sure that all uh, wood that we are using follow the same uh, SOP or procedure to process and to produce the agar wood oil. Uh, then number four, we generate uh, GCMS profiling of agar wood can develop a marker compound for grading agar wood in the near future. This is referred to Abdul Majid et al. 2018. In conclusion, uh, this study has been demonstrated uh, uh, the presence of several compounds related to the agar wood, uh, such as uh, 10-AP, udismol, cardinol, cardinin, udismol, dehydrodiusdimol, occur in all essential oils. So we can see if we can control the process and procedure, the, the SOP related to this uh, study, then definitely we can uh, get uh, almost similar result, uh, even from different inoculation techniques. Next. So these are some acknowledgement. Uh, I would also like to express my gratitude to Prim and also UPSI for their laboratory and analysis service, uh, and also to all who have directly in, or indirectly assisted in my research. So these are some of my references. With all that, I say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zamak, for your uh, good timekeeping. And also thank you for sharing the techniques and inoculum for future, uh, I hope, sustainability uh, agarwood industry in Malaysia in the future. Yep. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, your, your findings in the future. Thanks, Mr. Yep. Zamak. Thank you so much. Welcome. Okay, now we come to the last uh, presenter.
uh, I would like to invite uh, the, our, moder uh, the, our moderator, Dr. Ho Waiman, to present uh, a paper. Uh, she will talk on the biomass accumulation and carbon sequestration potential of Hopia Adorata on problematic sites in Malaysia. Uh, he has uh, the series of the uh, Dr. Ho. Uh, she is now the research officer at uh, Forest Biotechnology Division FRIM. Uh, she obtained uh, her PhD from uh, Seoul National University, uh, field of expertise, uh, phytoremediation, plant physiology, and carbon sequestration. Uh, she involved on the uh, uh, current project uh, on the rehabilitation of problematic sites, biomass accumulation of plantation species, uh, community, uh, and community forestry. Dr. Ho, the floor is yours. You are given 15 minutes, Mr. Dr. Ho. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rosti, for the brief introduction. Good morning again. Uh, I'd like to share with you about the potential of Hopio Odorata in carbon sequestration on problematic sites. Now, why Hopio Odorata? and what makes it special. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, in Malaysia, Hopia Odorata is locally known as Marawan Sipujatan or Changal Pasir. Uh, recently, it has been very popularly used in restoration programs as shade or ornamental trees in gardens and along road sites because of its high survival and good growth. As you can see in the slide, these trees can be easily recognized by their distinctive conical shaped crowns. Next slide, please. Okay, Hopia odorata is a dipterocarp species, as you know now, and it has been as enlisted as vulnerable in IUCN and also in the Malaysia Plant Rate List 2021. The fruit of Hopia odorata has two long wings and three short wings for dispersal by wind. Um, this tree produces small flowers that are yellowish and fragrant. Next, please. In our study, we aim to determine the growth and quantify the capability of Hopia odorata in carbon sequestration grown on two selected sites in FRIM's research stations in Bido and Setiu in the peninsula of Malaysia. Both tree stands are seven years old at the time of this study. Next slide, please. Okay, for the benefit of our non-Malaysian uh, friends, this is a map of the peninsula of Malaysia. The first site is located in Bido, is the one on your left, and uh, in the state of Para, and was previously mined for tin ore. Uh, on here, uh, opial odorata trees were planted on sand tailings and that have very low nutrient and low water retention capacity, making it actually unsuitable for succession, uh, especially by climax rainforest species without assisted regeneration. Um, on your right is the second site, uh, which is located in Setiu in the coastal area in the state of Trungano with brief soil. BRIS or B R I S stands for beach ridges interspersed with swales. It has high sand content too, and therefore having similar problems like poor fertility as in the sand tailings. Next slide, please. Now, what we did in this project was quantifying the carbon pool in these two sites. Before that, we needed to know the amount of biomass in trees, in standing vegetation litter, and also in soil that also constitute the whole stand biomass. Okay, okay so uh, we conducted a sampling of all these three components besides destructive sampling of trees for the determination of biomass or simply the weights of the trees. Next, please. Okay, all trees in the stand were measured for height and diameter at breast height, or I call it DBH. The trees were separated into parts like stem, branch, and leaf as above ground biomass. Wood these were cut from the stems to determine wood specific gravity or the wood density. This, this density will be very uh, important for us in the estimation of the whole stand biomass. We also excavated roots and determined their weights all these four different parts of a plant that made up the total biomass of a tree. Samples of uh, all parts were oven dried, 
for us to determine the dry biomass. So calculations of biomass are all based on dry weights. Next slide, please. So um, to give you an impression of how sampling was done in the site, let's start from the picture at uh, 9 o'clock and then we will go clockwise. Now litter consisted of the fallen leaves or twigs on the floor, on the forest floor, and then soil samples were collected in three layers at 15 centimeters interval until 45 centimeters below ground level. Uh, on uh, at the 3 p.m. the photo there we also collected little fall for a year while sampling of vegetation was conducted in uh, 50 cm by 50 cm quadrats. Uh, next please. So um, the results of our study. Next please. Uh, Firstly, as I've mentioned before, Hopi Odorata has very good survival even in these two problematic sites, 98% uh, in Bido and 95% in Situ. Uh, this is very, really high survival as we have seen in Mr. Wasan's uh, presentation just now. Uh, for your information, Situ can experience long droughts that can last up to three months. So in terms of growth, we found that trees in Bido have relatively better growth in height and also DBH compared to those in Situ. So the differences were actually uh, statistically different at 5% level. Next, please. Now, um, let's look at how much biomass these trees have accumulated within seven years of their lives. Um, I've divided the, the, the stand, uh, trees in the stand into three different dBH classes. For Bido, the classes are below 12 cm dBH, between 12 to 16 and 16 to 20. Biomass of trees doubled or tripled with increasing dBH. For example, the trees with the smallest dBH uh, have an average biomass of about 50 kilograms per tree, while those uh, in the largest DBH class have an average weight of about 150 grams per tree. Next slide, please. For Satil, uh, tree sizes uh, seem to be uh, much smaller here. DBH classes were divided into below 6 cm, 6 to 10, and 10 to 14 centimeters. Tree biomass range from only 20 to 50 kilograms per tree here. About 35% uh, of the tree biomass in steel was contributed by roots on average in comparison to only 25% in beetle. So the allocation of higher proportion of biomass in roots for steel could probably be attributed to the lower availability of water in uh, breeze soil, especially uh, in the breeze area, especially during dry season, uh, thus giving it a more developed or comprehensive root system. Uh, next, please. So if we put the two previous slides together, it is obvious that the sizes of trees in both sites are very, very different with much smaller DBH classes in Satil uh, with trees that can hardly reach 50 kilograms per tree at maximum. So next slide, please. Now, uh, we will study a little bit about the relationships of several parameters used to determine the above ground biomass of trees. Um, this slide shows us the information on Bido. On your left is the relationship between above ground biomass on the y-axis and dBH on the x-axis, while on the right is the above ground biomass versus the height. Both parameters are positively and strongly related to above ground biomass, having an R squared about uh, 0 0.94. Uh, next, please. However, for steel, let's look on the left figure. It shows that the above ground biomass and DBH have a strong DBH, but on the right side, the height of tree was poorly related to the above ground biomass with only uh, an R value, R squared value of only about uh, 0 0.5. Next, please. Another uh, important parameter that uh, was used to examine the biomass of tree was wood specific gravity or wood density calculated from the dry weight over green volume of samples from Sandis. Uh, both figures here show us a negatively correlated relationship with the top figure is for beetle and the bottom one is for steel. Uh, it is not surprising for us to observe that trees with larger biomass actually have lower density because uh, of their faster growth. However, we found that there was a strong relationship between uh, wood-specific gravity, uh, from now on I call it WSG, and above-ground biomass for trees in situ with an R-squared 
value of 0 0.9. Until now, uh, we have seen the relationships between above ground biomass and DBH, height, and also WSG, wood specific gravity. From the figures, DBH has shown us to be a significant parameter for estimation of uh, above ground biomass for both Satil and also Bido. In the next slides, we shall determine if height and wood specific gravity should also be included as a predictor variable for estimation of above ground biomass. Now, next please. Um, so from here, I'll refer to the above ground biomass as TAGB in short. Uh, in order for us to select the most suitable allometric equation for estimation of TAGB, there are three criteria used. The archaic information criteria are AIC, RIC, and adjusted R squared. We use linear regression models uh, here for estimation, and in order to make these equations simple to use, equations with lesser parameters are always preferred, and I'll explain to you why later. We tested all three parameters on DBH, on height, and WSG, and found that equations using the DBH with and without WSG minimize the AIC values. For your information, the smaller the AIC values, the better the model. When comparing between the models of B1 and B2, which is for BDO, the inclusion of WSG gave much smaller AIC, although slightly decreased the uh, adjusted R squared value and increased the RSE. This condition is the same for models S1 and S2 for steel. Next, please. Okay, besides models developed from this study, we also compared them with published models used for rainforest species. As there will be another paper in the afternoon describing carbon estimation in the next in mind, I'll just focus my discussion on breeze soil in situ. We found that the upper and lower limits of the uh, confidence uh, interval of all models developed in this study, that's S1 to S4, fit within the range of CI of the observed value. Now let's look at how the published models fare. These values are indicated in the boxes, which I have indicated in blue color. So when the equations of Brown and Basuki were applied to our data, the predicted values were well overestimated. Only the shape model using all three variables developed uh, gave values that fit into our CI range of observed values. Finally, um, we checked. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, we we checked the efficiency of the developed and published models. A model efficiency of one point zero indicates perfect fit, but a zero point zero indicates the predictions that are not good. So the index was highest at zero point nine four for our developed models, our own uh, very own developed models. But shape model also gave a rather good fit at zero point uh, about zero point nine here. Based on the previous criteria and considerations, we therefore use the models B2 for Beetle and S2 for Steel with the smallest AIC to estimate biomass and then uh, subsequently carbon sequestration potential of Hopiao Dorata. Okay, um, next please. So uh, you have, we found You have five more minutes, Doc. Okay, thank you, uh, Doctor. Uh, such we found that the DBH uh, models using DBH only are reliable for estimating biomass of Hopia odorata. Additional variables such as WSG, that's the wood specific gravity, only slightly increases the ind indicator's goodness of fit for the equations. So the incorporation of the WSG or other variables like height and commercial bow height into models may increase their efficiency. But researchers or plantation managers must also take into consideration the cost and time constraints to collect this information. So with the assumption of 625 trees per hectare, the total tree biomass of Hopia odorata in Bido about a is about 46 tons per hectare, was almost three times higher or larger than Satu. Carbon stock was estimated using an assumption that biomass has 50% carbon. Mm -hmm. And carbon stock of trees in Bido and Satu were also significantly different due to the large differences in biomass. Uh, based on our estimation, each Hopia odorata tree can contribute to the absorption of about 19 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent every year in Bido and 7 kilograms in situ. 
The World Bank has given us a range of carbon prices from less than one US dollar to about 190 US dollar per ton of carbon dioxide mm. equivalent. And by using the global average carbon price of about uh, two US dollars per ton, uh, as published by the IMF, uh, quite a rather low value here, but a beetle would yield an additional income of about $24 per hectare per year. And for a satil, $8 per hectare per year, just from securing these trees alone. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah. Living trees are not the only components that can sequester carbon. Our soil data show that soil carbon decreased with increasing soil depth. Um, the figure showed a uh, high soil uh, carbon content in the first 15 centimeters of soil in situ. Um, next slide, please. This diagram shows us a general view of the carbon pool in trees, forest floor, and, uh, and the, uh, sorry. Um, next slide, please. Uh, okay, I will go a little bit faster here. Um, next, please. Yeah, uh, this diagram shows us the general view of carbon pool in trees, for forest floor, and the soil. In Bido, the carbon pool is about 41 tons per hectare, with trees constituting 56%. Uh, next slide, please. In situ, despite having its smaller tree biomass, the Hopi Odorata stand consisted of a carbon pool of about 52 tons per hectare, uh, but 80% of the carbon pool was contributed by soy. Next, please. So after all this, uh, what can we imply from the results? First of all, we know that more trees means more carbon sequestered. In this study, a one hectare Hopi Adorata stand in an XT mine can sequester about 23 tons of carbon, while on breeze soil, about eight tons of carbon. Soil is also an important uh, carbon pool with 40 to 80% of carbon of the stand stored within 45 centimeters of the soil uh, from the ground. Besides as carbon pool, tree stands also offer other ecological services like habitats to a biodiversity of fungi. Next slide, please. So in the, in the Hopi Odorata stand in Bido, the first record of white parasol or Macrolepiota dolicala was documented. A few other types of fungi that were spotted in the same site were like this brain-like fungi called Calvatia craniformis, like our cranium, and the coral-like fungi called uh, Clavulina coralloides. Next, please. Okay, we uh, researchers of this study, we would like to acknowledge the Ministry of Agriculture through the Science Fund uh, for the support. We, also great, we are also grateful for the staff in Bido and Satil Research Stations for their assistance. Uh, with this, uh, yeah, I hand over the time back to our session chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ho, for your uh, interactive uh, and uh, informative uh, sharing knowledge. Like, uh, definitely, uh, Hopi is one of the potential uh, species, uh, especially you are dealing with the problematic soil, right? Especially it happens in experience in the Q and B though, right? So it's now come to we have come to the Q and A session. We have thirty minutes for Q and A session. Uh, so I open to the floor, right? To if any uh, burning question, you can ask uh, uh, straight away. To uh, you can mention to the uh, which speaker. And then you just mention the question, right? So if not, I will read the question from the Q and bo Q and A box. So uh, uh, all open right, the floor. Right. Uh, can I, uh, Mr. Chairman? Can I ask uh, Hwai Man some question? Please, the time. Hi, thank you very much, uh, Doctor Kos, uh, Rosti. Uh, Hwai Man, uh, you know the uh, planting in our uh, Imbido station uh, is four by four by five. So basically, mean five hundred three. Per hectare. Uh, you use the six to five, so it will be excess of about 125 tree. So will it not cause an overestimate in your carbon uh, uh, sequestration capacity of the per hectare basis? Uh, yeah, you're right, uh, Dr. Ang. Actually, I used uh, the assumption of 625 trees, and that is why it is assumed that uh, in one hectare, there's only about this much of trees using the condition given in Bido. Yeah, you, you see the, but people, if they're not aware, then uh, they will think that this is the right amount that uh, will come. Uh, why not you use the right uh, number of three instead of uh, making an assumption of four by four? 
any yeah, good reason? Uh, that that is the four by four is for compare. The, the reason is, is for comparison with the steel plot. You see, the steel plot is done uh, in in such a way that the the uh what do you call it? The number of trees per hectare is uh the the density of trees uh, per stand is. Uh, six to five. Yeah. yeah, you see, because the variation of density. But even density, we didn't plant it uh, for one, the whole yeah. one hectare, that's why we have to make an assumption. Yeah, so you, you yeah. see the, the plot that uh, we have done, this was actually Kanaf uh, plot dossier. It was a uh, 10 meter by four meter because the center part was used for Kanaf. So uh, very important, if these uh, three crown diameter are not touching one another, then within the space, uh, still good enough to compare. But uh, very interesting to take note is that because during Kanaf early day, they pump in a lot of fertilizer. The chicken manual something about 10 ton per hectare. And then uh, that's the reason why uh, the tree there grow a bit uh, faster than in Setio. And also Setio, it could be due to the iron pen. Because uh, by the way, what, what is the root... Uh, Biomass that you extracted from uh, Satyo? Uh, if we look back at our slides, uh, do we have my slides there? Um, I, I think the. Uh, probably. Because I'm in another file. No, I, no, my, I, I think it's, my... it's okay, Baman. Yeah, probably, Dr. Ah, Ang, you ah. could put the uh, question in the in the chat box. Because um, uh, one, I will answer uh, to your questions. Uh, to you your you questions know what happened later. is I, I could not type the question into the chat and you box. You can put it in the chat box. <laughs> no, you can I, put it in the chat box. No, can't, can't not, type the, uh, not, not can't type it into the chat box. Also. Oh, chat box is on the other side, is it? Ah, okay. Yes. But but the, the other thing is uh, just to sort of. Uh, see you see what happened you can compare like you see like CTO you can still use six to five per hectare and compare to Bido by using uh, the quantity of a four by five uh, the reason being is more interested is that per hectare basis plants but your plant can acquire more is still comparative because you're talking about per hectare right uh, so I think uh, there's one thing. And then the other thing that uh, I was just when read through the your relative growth, uh, how you sort of compare the relative growth. Uh, you, you see relative growth, let's say, say a diameter. We need to have an initial diameter measurement. And then after that, we take another diameter measurement. And then we have the launch or we do the long. Yeah. So, uh, do you mean mean annual increment or you mean uh, relative growth rate? Yeah, it's actually mean annual increment. Yeah, your point is right. Uh, so just, point. Just, just change the other one. Uh, relative yeah. growth rate means something. I mean to say there's no more units. There's no value uh, for GR, GR. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh. So, maybe just a, a little correction. Uh, then nothing much. But the, the end had to be verified. Yeah. So, I saw, okay. I saw the value here is height meaning the MAI. Yeah, it's MAI. It's, it's not a, the RGI. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay because uh, this start thing because it's a proceeding. But the, uh, yeah, but as you can see here, the the units would be correct. It's just the description. It's a, it's a mean annual increment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely because of uh, zero point nine six multiplied by seven, but but one about about seven centimeter. Yeah, but the, you. That, that's right. But next, next time, now I had to look at. I think we have to find a way how to get on comparatively in terms of uh, you because the moment the uh, spacing and then it's different, then a lot of things uh, have to take into consideration. But as I saw the quantification on the comparative of the equation used uh, is pretty uh, pretty nice, very good, right? Um, actually, I, Dr. Ang, I, I, my, the, the whole objective of this uh, project is not to compare between how Situ is growing and how Bido is growing. It's actually more on how how different they are with trees and without trees. Yeah. Mm, but yeah, I have to stop so the, it, it, yep, your, okay. your, your debates, right? So we have... Uh, no, 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 no debate, just a... Uh, right. so, so, this is like sharing, this is knowledge really sharing, right? So, mm -hmm. And I have put to the uh, other participants, right? Thank you, Ms. Sang, for your question. Right. 
Is there any burning question from the floors? If not, I will read from the QA Q and A box. If no question, I will open my Q and A box. All right. So the first uh, I will write. Hold on, hold on. I will read on the open. Uh, anonymous attendee, is there any incidence of biopiracy reported? Thus far in the region, especially species under the category of EN. Please them if there if their species, if any. Thank you, but I think the question goes to uh, Mr. Fauzi. Okay, uh, this one I think the ans the the answer should be from Jabatan Forest Department. They have. I think they have this, the data, the, the species. Uh, then uh, that that should be the answer. Lah. For us, we, we don't have the data with us. Okay, thanks, Mr. Fauzi. The second uh, question, uh, Datuk Sri Abdul Rahman. Uh, I think Dr. Dr. Ang uh, can answer this question. The question is, uh, what are the biggest issue and challenges in undertaking the exit to conservation and carbon uh, carbon sequestration potential. So, Dr. Ang, if you have uh, view, your views or other presenters, do you have any views uh, regarding on this question? Uh, I think Dr. Abdul Rahman uh, always asks very important <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> question. Uh, I think the 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 very uh, difficulty Dr. Dr. is to do with the whether number one, uh, we could have the land that is really uh, classified and in terms of the amount, the land and funding that needed to do it. Because in terms of uh, genetically speaking, whatever trees that are in the forest, if ever we can ID them and call them, uh, you know, um, Ridley species, then their seed, particularly to phenology, we can track them. And then we focus on them, we can get them out, accidentally uh, planted them because we had technology uh, for planting, not a problem at all. Uh, but then things uh, like sometimes uh, when you look at uh, high mortality rate uh, in planting is because they do not observe the three important interconnecting principles that normally we would think to create constitution. Basically knowing your tree and the site demand and how they grow and how to prepare well to cater for it and then to have a proper timing. So uh, eventually it's to do with uh, whether or not you can come up with very good SOP. Let's say until some time, people no longer uh, can carefully look at things because you need expertise. So I think the expertise, whatever that we know must be put into a manual or in a SOP. And then after that, you must have good monitoring. Uh, so the moment you have good monitoring, make sure that all the tanning are done properly, site preparation done, that should be fine. Because you see in Bido, uh, that we have uh, basically very poor site, but uh, in the whole area now is uh, turning not only green, but also uh, is a great place that we can do uh, tradable carbon credit. Yeah. Uh, so because it's a uh, alienated land, uh, it's not a forested land. So I hope that uh, answer your question and you may like to uh, say something. Long time have not heard your voice, uh, Dato. Dato Sri, uh, are you there, Dato Sri? Okay. Uh, if not, uh, there's one more question uh, to Mr. Uh, Wagan, right? So the question is, uh, Mr. Wagan, Mr. Wagan, are you there? Hello, Mr. Wagan, are you there? Oh, Mr. Chairman, maybe Mr. Wagan, uh, the they are, they are in Thailand, uh, could be maybe the connection. I, yeah, I can uh, see him, right. So, oh, okay, oh, never mind. Maybe. Uh, 
Okay, there is one uh, comments from the uh, uh, Su Suresh, is it? Uh, for Mr. Ame, there is a there are still some of Chengal in Thailand. It's not yet extinct. There's also a comment from the uh, Su Suresh, I think. Uh, Mr. Ame, do you have any comments on this? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, can you repeat the question again? Okay, uh, there are still some uh, of Chingal in Thailand. It's not yet extinct. Uh, yeah, uh, there are some Chingal in Thailand, uh, in northern part uh, of Thailand. Uh, and uh, the record is that there are still some Chingal in Thailand. Okay, uh, I have put a, actually it was extinct in Singapore, not in Thailand. Okay, thank you, Mr. Amir, for your response. All right. Okay, other question uh, already answered by the uh, presenter. Uh, oh, is there any questions, any questions uh, to be asked to the presenters? Mr. Wagan, yeah, I saw Mr. Wagan. Mr. Wagan, are you there? Mr. Wasan? Me? Okay, there is one question uh, posted to you. Uh, were, were there any assessment done on the soil carbon stocks before planting and assessment after year five or nine of establishment? Um, uh, my list is not collect uh, soil carbon. Uh, soil sample only uh, uh, estimate on uh, soil nutrient, soil, uh, uh, soil texture, and soil. Um, sorry, and and soil moisture. Uh, carbon uh, carbon stock in soil, uh, soil carbon cannot estimate carbon. Okay, thank you, Mister Wasan. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so I think, uh, is there any, any questions? It's no more questions, is it? If not, we move to the uh, poster presentation. Uh, if you have a burning question, nobody can ask the uh, authors uh, because normally the authors return their, their email address, is it, uh, with the moderator? So you can contact uh, yeah. the, author, or, or the authors uh, based on, uh, you can refer to the program books, right? So now we move to the uh, uh, poster presentation. There are eight poster presentation will be displayed by the moderator. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, those uh, you have any question, you can uh, you can directly contact the uh, corresponding author, right? So uh, the moderator uh, or the organizer, can you show the uh, slide uh, of the post poster representation. Bagan, dear to. So how? Shh. 
the 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 uh, slide uh, poster presenting stop. I think something with technical. Okay, I just briefly uh, read the title of the uh, posters, right? Uh, the first poster is the a survival and growth of Aquilaria Krishna, Protilolobium nasilatum, Yomana Kaposemia, and Vatica diospridus, grown on X mining in two climatic zones at 40 more months after planting. The corresponding author is the uh, Mr. Puang Pang uh, from the Kasasat University, right? So the second poster is preliminary findings on soil properties in the natural Rafflosia habitat and experimental plot in Greek Pera. The corresponding author is uh, Nor Hafiza. The third uh, poster is increasing the tree by the tree increasing tree diversity index through ex situ conservation of endangered, endemic, and threatened tree species on an extreme mining in Peninsular Malaysia. Corresponding author is uh, a Thai like Kwan uh, from Frim. Right? So the fourth one is preliminary study on tissue culture protocol development of new Balana Kapas Hemiai. Corresponding author is Riz Amira from FRIM. And the next uh, poster is biomass quantification of Chengal seedlings planted using innovative planting techniques in log over forest. Corresponding author is Farah Shahanim. Uh, next assessment of zinc, layered hydroxide, uh, nano hybrid with nitrate and phosphate onion on the growth performance of selected three seedlings under nursery trials. Corresponding author is uh, Rosita at Frim. Uh, next one, carbon removal and emission from forest free sectors, adding value to protect, protect red list three species. Uh, corresponding author is Nor Sheila at Frim. The last uh, poster is seed quality testing for several threatened nitrocups. Corresponding author is one Noraliza at film. So, um, Dr. Rusty, may I uh, show the slide again? Yes, you can proceed to the slide show. Does it, does it have sound? No, I don't hear any sounds from your slide. Oh, sorry. Reshare. Music now? Yes, I can hear the music. All right, thank you. It's no music. <laughs> Stop. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can't press any buttons now.
Okay, thank you, uh, organizer. Okay, for those you have uh, any, uh, you need any clarification, you can contact the authors. Uh, the detail you can find it on the uh, program books, right? Before I hand it over to the uh, moderator, uh, thank you for the, your participation, especially to the uh, presenters. With that, I pass to the um, Dr. Ho. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rosti, for making the session an interesting one and for the excellent timing. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our panel judges as I've already received the evaluation and the name of the winner for the best poster presentation. So stay with us and the winner will be announced at the end of the webinar. The webinar will now take a break and please join me again at 2 p.m. Malaysia time in the final session which will discuss on one of the most popular topics this day on carbon sequestration. So see you again at 2 p.m. Malaysia time. Thank you.
Hi everyone. Okay, you listen to me, right? Okay, thank you so much. Can I have some of those coffee too? Dr. Hu, you can hear my voice, isn't it? Yes, perfectly, Dr. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, now everyone is asking Dr. Pontet for the coffee. <laughs> you, you, you can come to Thailand. I know, I they have really coffee. excellent, they have really excellent coffee there. I know. So, okay, but I'm staying in coffee, Coffee shop because I'm staying in the in the some province in Thailand. Ah, uh, you're doing your field work there. That's right. That's right. I'm so sorry for the connection. I'm not sure because I used my my phone. Yeah, probably you could speak a little bit louder. That would be nice. Okay, I, I will try. I will try because <laughs> you can see. A lot of people in the coffee shop. It's a very nice surrounding. I wish I could be there. All right. Uh, so we'll just start in a minute or so. Okay, welcome back everybody. Good afternoon and uh, thank you for staying, uh, staying with us uh, for the Afuko Regional Webinar. We are now at the final session of the webinar, uh, session five, which will be chaired by Dr. Jayani Vijayanedin. Dr. Jayani obtained her PhD in soil science from the University Putra, Malaysia. She has over 17 years of experiences in soil chemistry, fertility, survey, and plant nutrient man management. Dr. Jayani has deep interest in the research on environmental soil science and soil conservation in forestry, precision agriculture and forestry, carbon stocks and fluxes in the natural and plantation ecosystems, crop management and plant management on degraded environments. That's a lot of yeah, expertise here. So Dr. Jenny is also actively involved in various organizations, which include as a registered chemist with Malaysia Chemistry Institute, vice president of the Malaysian Society of Soil Science, member of FAO Soil Pollution Working Group and a scientific advisory committee of the East Asia Asset Deposition Network. Dr. Jenny will chair the session five and will also pre uh, present a paper itself, right? On carbon storage capacity of red list trees on an extinct mine, which I'm personally looking forward to. So without much ado, the session is now in your hands, Dr. Jenny. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ho, for the kind uh, introduction. Okay, good afternoon to the respected moderator, keynote speakers, 
uh, international delegates and all the participants in this much awaited webinar. Today we are here continuing from yesterday's session to look at several aspects of the importance of conservation, plantation management and the aspects of carbon sequestration potential of the IUCN red list species. Over the past four decades, increasing temperature trends of uh, 0 0.13 to 0 0.24 degrees Celsius per decade have been observed in Malaysia with pronounced decreasing trends in rainfall. In 2016, 55% of land in Malaysia was still forested and with an increase in population about 2% annually, we are going to witness a shift in the land use change of forests. However, forest in Malaysia is a prominent saviour when it comes to greenhouse gas removals, whereby in the latest biannual report to the UNFCC, we recorded almost a 260 ton carbon dioxide equivalent removal from all sectors to show a total emission of 75 tons of CO2E equivalent only. Thus, I'm the current... sorry to interrupt yes. Dr. Jenny. Are you sharing your slides already? Not yet, not yet. Okay. Uh, this is right. just the introduction. S sorry. No worries. So thus, uh, the current mantra in this session today is to plant more variable trees, evaluate their capability on keeping carbon intact with a two-pronged approach on how we can also conserve this IUCN species in ex situ environments with intentions that it will benefit the common good. Thus, uh, let me start my presentation today to set the tone for this session. Uh, I would uh, require the Secretariat to allow me to share my screen. Eh? Is my uh, slides viewable? Yes, it is good. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ho. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just as our previous introduction, the title for my presentation today is Main Annual Carbon Storage Capacity of Selected IUCN Red List uh, Threatened Species in the Bido uh, Extinct Mining uh, Area. So, uh, please walk with me during this uh, presentation. Uh, we will answer all questions at the end of the session today. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bido Tin Tailing Afforestation Center sprawls across 300 acres of land. It has more than 70 bird species with uh, at least 25 mammals such as otters and monkeys, wild boars, also 150 plant species. Uh, in the early years, in early 1996, I believe that the Perak government was very interested in the environment and has forged hand with our institute, uh, Forest Research Institute of Malaysia, in order to establish this area as a Bido research station. So out of the 90 rainforest species that is being planted here, at least 22 belongs to the EETS uh, species. Uh, we would also like to uh, congratulate the Bido research team, whereby they have uh, already marked their presence in the Malaysian Book of Records, whereby they are recorded as the largest just man-made forest in an extinct mine. Okay. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, how I consider forests as warriors uh, simply because we can never discredit forests. Uh, being working in FRIM itself, uh, we see its uh, various uh, ecosystem services for the humankind and the environment, especially the indigenous people. They rely on our forests for their livelihood. It serves as a biodiversity sanctuary for the flora and fauna. It provides various ecosystems such as water catchment areas, purifies the air. Of course, recently with the recent uh, yeah, information on climate change, they have also become an important uh, sector in storing carbon in its biomass as well as in soils. We know that at least 30.6% of the Earth's land is forest. And however, the net loss of at least 3.3 million hectares per year annually is a major source of carbon emission. We in Malaysia are quite blessed because 
the Lulu CF sector plays an important role in bringing down the greenhouse gas emission. As you can see here in the graph from 1990 to 2016, uh, most of the removals are being uh, done in the land use and land use change and forestry sector. So what started off in this area as a self-sustaining afforestation center in an extinct mine actually became much more greater than what we can consider. It has moved into a germplasm uh, depository for tree diversity to conserve EEGS species. It is also now a prominent uh, ecosystem as a potential mitigation strategy as how has been uh, clearly informed in our keynote speaker, Dr. Ang's presentation this morning on how uh, Bido Research Station <clears throat> can actually contribute to carbon credits. So here are some pictures that I would like to show you. You know, uh, during the early days, uh, this was taken up in year 2000, the picture on your left-hand side, when there nothing grew there. It was an ex-mining land. Slowly, Hopia odorata stands were introduced here as nurseries in order to uh, uh, control the microclimate of this area before we even do the enrichment planting. So once the Hopia odorata trees have grown up uh, quite well and well established, uh, we introduced several species, some of them, of course, from the rainforest species, which are actually IUCN ridley species. So the species that we are talking about mainly are dry Bellanox aromatica, Shoria roxbergai, Shoria platicados, and uh, the famous Chengala, New Bellanocamus hemiae, as was presented by uh, Mr. Ame in the earlier session today morning. Of course, uh, when we planted these trees, they were close to about 30 to 50 cm in height. Uh, it was not easy trying to uh, mend and tend uh, slime tailings here in an ex-mining land. The planting holes had to be filled with uh, at least 80% uh, pure chicken uh, manure, about 60 grams during planting. They applied the NPK fertilizers 15, 15, 15, uh, as well as included uh, burnt rice husk as a soil emulation technique. Uh, scheduled fertilization, watering, and weeding uh, took well uh, and also was done periodically for the first and also the second year until all these trees were well established. And annually, the tree diameter at breast heights, the crown heights and the survival rates were measured. So here are most, more photos from the area when the seedlings were uh, prior to planting in uh, very late uh, 2011 and the planting activities uh, being done in this area in Bido Research Station. So we went in this year, in about uh, September, to actually estimate what was the value of uh, carbon here. So we did some tree, uh, tree measurements, mainly the diameter at breast heights, and then we collected soil samples uh, at uh, different depths, which was at 0 0.15 and 15 to 30 centimeter at depth. Uh, I'm sure you remember what Dr. Ho Waiman presented, that she showed very high carbon content in the first layer component to second layer. So that was mainly our justification of breaking up our depths into taking into two different depths. Of course, we also collected um, soil core rings. This was mainly done to determine the bulk density of the samples as well as the moisture content. Uh, last but not least, we also collected litter samples on the floor using our uh, frames in order to determine the carbon density. Uh, for this plot, we did not do any destructive sampling in order to uh, come up with some special allometric equations. However, you, we use the well-established equations which has been recorded by Chave et al. 2005 for above ground biomass. And the roots were actually uh, also measured using the Pearson et al. equation. And finally, whatever values that we got from our uh, soil chemistry lab, which is under 
and Rosita in frame, uh, we collect, uh, calculated the soil carbon density with the bulk density as well as the depth. Uh, we also did the similar thing for the liter carbon density. Finally, all these values were used to convert into a stoichiometric uh, conversion into CO2 equivalent using the 44 over 12 uh, conversion factor. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here are the results that we would like to share with you for the eight-year-old uh, plants or even trees here in Bido. The highest was recorded by Shoria platicados. Uh, this was not something of uh, what uh, was uh, awkward because uh, Shoria platicados have a very good uh, growth. I know in natural forests, I have read some literature review, it can grow up to 16.5 centimeter for about a 10 year old or even an eight year old uh, tree. And then uh, we found that uh, Shoria peticados values, which is about 30, was also similar to Equilaria melacensis and Dry Bellonops aromatica. They were somehow in the range, you know, from 23 to 30. For Equilaria melacensis, uh, another colleague of us, Mr. Majid has done some uh, studies here. He's, he reported uh, values about 30 tons per hectare in the above ground biomass, which was quite similar to what we have also acquired here, about 26.07 uh, for similar class of DBH. So let's look at the carbon stocks ecosystem in the IUCN plot. So from here, what we see is that the biggest fraction is in the above ground biomass followed by soil, and that is only a 0 to 30 cm depth. But when you go into areas such as uh, peatland, you would find so much more carbon in uh, areas such as that compared to uh, areas uh, in Bido Research Station, which was rehabilitated, uh, rehabilitated initially. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we summarize here is that at least 54% of the carbon stocks are locked in the above ground biomass. Our values uh, also concur with all the other workers who have reported similar uh, trends in above ground ca carbon stocks in tropical forests. 32% is represented in the soil beneath your feet that you were taking a walk with me in Bido. And finally, 23% or almost a quarter of the above crown stocks is represented in the root fractions. So uh, let me share with you what was actually being done with all the activities which took place in Bido Research Station. From the start of the site prep preparation to tree planting, maintenance and measurement, you can see that uh, somehow whatever that was uh, done here, it helped to minimize soil degradation. Uh, knowing that this was an ex-mining area, it was also able to minimize contamination because some rainforest trees species have the tendency to do to phytoremediate back the soil and it also enhanced the carbon stocks and pools and the potential of this area. Whatever maintenance and the measurement which was done was able to uh, foster nutrient balance here and finally a creation of new forests was established. Uh, we of course, know that our main intention was to have this as a tree diversity germplasm pool. Um, we hope that in future, it may be able to uh, generate uh, income generation and also serve as a biodiversity hub uh, for payment for ecosystem services. So when we are talking about uh, monetary funds related to carbon, so so what? You know, we have estimated the carbon stocks here. So how is it going to benefit us in the future? So whatever that we estimated, we calculated uh, for uh, for the area based on tons per carbon per hectare. We found that the annual allocation is about uh, 17.26 ton of uh, carbon dioxide equivalent per hectare. And uh, looking at the current price, for the uh, carbon trading in the market is about 4.3 US dollar in forestry and land use. We can estimate that uh, this area would serve as a, you know, as a carbon credit for almost USD 74 uh, dollars per hectare per year annually. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I believe that we cannot be passive in whatever that we do. Uh, we also have to become a game changer in whatever we are doing. So, let me share with you some of my thoughts uh, in this slide. Okay, firstly, you can lessen your carbon footprint. You know, try to use energy efficient uh, equipments or even uh, uh, vehicles which are energy efficient. You can also try to become vegetarian, which is uh, not very common because we know in the agriculture uh, sector, one of the biggest emitter is the dairy and industry or the meat industry. Yeah. So uh, secondly, invoke community awareness. Start from young. Uh, try to embed the need to uh, inspire young children in understanding biodiversity, climate change, carbon stocks from the young, because these are the leaders of our uh, nation where they will grow up and they will make the sound mind in how conservation would play an important role in the world that they are going to live in after us. Thirdly, support conservation efforts. Currently, FRIM is into uh, the uh, campaign of planting uh, 100 uh, million trees. Eh? Stratos Juta Poco, I have given the link down here. We are actively uh, participating. If you are an industry player or an NGO or an individual, come talk to us, see how we can help you to make uh, the our uh, country a better place to stay. And of course, today is Hari Alam Sagita Negara, or also known as the National Environment Day. Uh, do your part in whatever small effort that you can. Finally, I would like to say, think circular economy. You know, whatever we use, try not to waste, recycle. Even in the wood industry, we are able to uh, get the sawdust, the wood chips, which can be used as uh, paper cardboards or changed into liquor or even soil amendments through the uh, production of uh, biochar through pyrolysis. So, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end my uh, presentation soon. I know uh, being in FRIM as well as uh, FRIM itself is doing her very best in trying to attend and as well as adhere to all the goals such as the uh, goal number six, uh, the 12, 13, 15 and 17 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. But I believe you also have an uh, important part to play in order to make our dreams possible. So with that, I would like to end my presentation here. I would like to acknowledge everybody who played an important role in the uh, making of this paper, the collection, the data analysis, uh, as well as the Secretariat of uh, the XC2 Conservation and Carbon Sequestration for allowing me to present this uh, paper. Uh, since you work with me in Bido, I uh, truly understand there is no Wi-Fi in the forest, but I hope that through this presentation, it has actually open a doorstep or even a connection for you in order to uh, mitigate, uh, in order to come up with certain strategies for mitigating climate change with us. With that, thank you. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have ended my presentation. Uh, thus, I would like to uh, invite our second speaker for today. Our second speaker for today is uh, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Pong Tep. Han, Patna, Han Patanaki. He's a lecturer with the Faculty of Environment, Culture and Ecotourism, Sri Nakari Nivirot University. He has vast experience in ecosystem processes involving carbon dynamics, greenhouse gas production and emissions. We also worked together in a previous uh, project before this under the umbrella of International Foundation of Science. He has a PhD in environmental technology. He has very publications in refereed journals. So uh, without much ado, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Pong Tep to present his uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jenny, and uh, for your inviting me. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tep Today, I would like to share my research for this Carbon and carbon stock from the carbon in 
การจะโชคขาฟอยต์แอดนะครราชสมบัติโรบินสไทยแลนด์ next this is a topic for my presentation a uh, presentation presentation today as about introduction objective material and the topics of discussion and conclusion next Uh, Dr. Pongte, sorry for interrupting. Your voice is very slow. Can you increase your volume so we can hear? Thank you. Okay, so we found to do that is the facing for my presentation. Uh, your voice can you uh, speak a bit louder oh, okay okay but my my slide is uh, freezing right now how to do that your slides are freezing yes okay do you want us to share from our side dr pongte can we do that okay okay next uh, Okay, for the I'm, I'm so sorry for my presentation. The the text is uh, something mistake, with some big or some small equality. Okay, okay. Maybe the version of the PowerPoint. So the I think uh, the person is talking about the probability and identity, and uh, I think uh, the climate change is a problem to environment. And the human, and especially for the carbon cycle in the forest. Okay, I think everybody know about the carbon fixing by by uh, photosynthesis. You listen me? Yes, we can. You can okay. continue. Uh, up, up. Okay. Uh, the carbon stock in the biomass, uh, just as the leaf, branch, and stem after pounded, and the carbon released to the atmosphere by the respiration, uh, respiration process. Next. Previous study uh, in Thailand, we uh, study about the carbon stock in different type of the forest. Uh, the carbon stock uh, in the different type of uh, if different uh, type of the forest equal about 20, 27 to the one hundred and per hectare. Next. Okay. Uh, the Dadikto Roka forest is the one of the uh, most important uh, forests in Thailand. So uh, uh, the, this forest is the number third of the uh, number third of the of the most in in uh, number third of the forest in Thailand is about thirty one point eight five percent of the area. Next. Next. Okay. Uh, the main of some species in this forest are uh, just the Dithrocarpus insectus and Dithrocarpus in tuberculatus is the one of the dominant species in this forest. Uh, is the land list three species in Nadiproka forest and some and uh, the many species of this forest is the extending species for, uh, from the Nadiproka forest also. Next. The problem is that understanding carbon stock in the lead species in the Nadiproka forest 
are important for evaluating their carbon sinks, capacity, climate feedback, and global carbon cycle. However, also the example underscore the importance of site condition. They also show that there are different patterns which need to be studied firstly, regionally, and then in order to the, uh, manage and protect different tree species in the different region, especially in view of the lately tree species present. Next, the objective of my study, I would like to estimate the carbon stock in the upper carb railway and below carb in primary and low carb forest. Conceptual framework, the primary, uh, we observe the above-car wheel map, below-car wheel map, and above-car pen wheel map. For the above-car wheel map and below-car wheel map, we study by uh, using the allometric equation for above-car wheel map. We uh, land on and collect the above-car wheel map. Next. My phone is okay. After that, we analyze for the carbon stock by using CHN analysis and we calculate the carbon stock in nitrocarbon less. Okay, next. The material and method. This is the size study, uh, the oversight study for the Aboka web map we observe at Nakona Jasima province. Uh, you can enter next. Uh, this location is Escala uh, Environmental Research Station uh, uh, for, for uh, the specific. Uh, this forest is a decibel forest. This year forest is a characteristic leaf for during the dry season and the leaf uh, expand again during the wet season. Next. For Aboka Veroman, uh, next. Sorry for the check is overlap a lot. Okay, uh, we use for find the carbon stock by using allometric equation. We measure the diameter and dBh followed by this picture. Uh, next. Uh, for the above pen, uh, we measure and collect the, 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 the pen on the ground, followed by this picture and dry and wet. After that, we calculate the carbon stock by uh, multiply of the percent of carbon after measurement uh, by using the uh, CSN analyzer. Next. Okay, I show that some picture. Hmm. This is the process for analyzing by carbon stock by using CHN analysis. Next. This all and discussion. This is the side description in the digital car forest. The stem density about 325 stem per hectare, mean tree height 11 meter, mean dBh 12.5 centimeter, basal area 0.11 square uh, meter per hectare, length of temperature around 20 to 30. To 33 degrees Celsius, edge of soil temperature 20 to 29 uh, degrees Celsius, range soil moisture 
around uh, 38 to 55 percent water food for Spain landfalls in our side uh, was 1260 millimeter per year. For the plant growth, uh, we measure the carbon uh, uh, stock from the plant uh, start at January 2019 until one year ago. The average of the plant growth around uh, 11 meter uh, of high and DB has what 12.5 centimeter length. After that, we calculate the carbon stock by using the uh, carbon next. Sorry, next. The next. This show this card is show that the oh sorry back again. Okay, this show that the carbon stock uh, uh, during three months. Uh, the total of the carbon stock in a program will met around uh, 74 ton carbon per hectare uh, and is uh, stem around 50 ton carbon per hectare and the, uh, okay, brands uh, 13 and leaf uh, 1.8 ton carbon per hectare. Next. Next, for the below ground biomass, uh, uh, the carbon stock around six ton uh, carbon per hectare. The carbon stock pledge of the Gaditro Carb Forest per year was uh, 6.6 ton carbon per hectare. Next. Next. Okay. This is the uh, above ground pan biomass uh, around uh, 0 0.08 ton carbon per hectare. Next. Okay, uh, the factor for control of the carbon stock in the digital car forest, the first one is climate, as for temperature, temperature, and precipitation. The second is forest fire activity. activity. Uh, the characteristic of the digital car forest, uh, one thing for important uh, is often the fire for uh, the forest fire in every year. Next. Okay, this conclusion. Okay, the total of the carbon stock as shown this uh, uh, slide, and the climate, human activity, and forest fire have been important to carbon stock in digital carbon. Thank you for your uh, thank you for your attention. So, okay. I'm so sorry for the wording is the overlap and. Mr. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pongtep, for the interesting presentation. We really appreciate it. Uh, since you finished on uh, time, uh, maybe I can allow one question. Uh, anybody who would like to ask one question to Dr. Pongtep, if there is, please raise your hand. Anybody from the uh, participants? So if there are no questions, Dr. Pongtep, can I ask one question on behalf? Yes. Okay, uh, you have mentioned in your last several slides that uh, some, of, uh, some of the uh, you know, problems that you're facing is forest fire in the dry deep up forest. So uh, what are the strategies or the, um, you know, um, uh, ways that you are planning to take or being implemented in order to reduce the forest fire in this dry diptorocarp forest. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, in Thailand, uh, it's occurred the forest fire in every year, especially in the decibel forest. Uh, in Thailand, policy have the rule uh, protect the forest fire when the people need to uh, uh, find the forest. You want to make activity, activity just that it easy go to find the 
the some food, for example, the mushroom or the get some animal. But uh, when uh, eat occur the forest fire and the community or the uh, people are finding or keep the the news how uh, what if the people is a uh, uh, make the fortify and tell to the government or police he will get the money yeah i think i think uh, this is uh, not good for the for the for the rule but sometimes uh it can to reduce because <laughs> when uh, i know other people uh, make the fortify i will talk to police he gets many and uh, and uh, the people after the fortify they pay money to the in the Thai government, yeah. Because we have the uh, law of the protect the the, the forest fire, but sometimes it's not possible to 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 control. Okay, never mind, uh, Doctor Bong. That we understand that uh, different regions as well as countries, despite having laws, you know, the implementation as well as how we go about it is a bit difficult. Anyhow, thank you very much, Dr. Bong Tep. Uh, please stay tuned to the Q&A box. If there's any question, it will appear there. Yeah? Okay, thank you. So uh, for the next speaker, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Hamdan Omar. He is the head of the Joe Information Program in Frame. Uh, Dr. Hamdan Omar has his uh, Bachelor of Science in Remote Sensing as well as uh, same for his Master's as well, Remote Sensing. And his PhD is in Forest Engineering and Operation. So uh, Dr. Hamdan's uh, field of expertise is Remote Sensing and GIS as well as Forest Carbon ass Assessment and also uh, various, uh, various research related to carbon offsets, climate change and development deforestation. He has published more than 100 journals in articles, proceedings and books and he has uh, more than uh, 30 consultant, uh, consultancy services uh, since serving in PRIM since uh, 2008. So today uh, Dr. Hamdan Omar uh, will enlighten us on his presentation uh, titled Wood density variations and carbon sequestration rate of red leaf trees. So uh, I invite Dr. Hamdan to share his presentation. Uh, Dr. Hamdan, you have uh, 15 minutes uh, to present your work. Thank you. Hi, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and a very good afternoon to all participants. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jenny, for the kind introduction. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, talk a bit uh, today on the topic wood density variation and uh, the relation of uh, the density uh, between carbon sequestration rate uh, of uh, some red list trees in peninsula Malaysia. Okay, uh, next, uh, thank you. <clears throat> so actually what is uh, wood density? Wood density it, uh, is a measure of the amount of actual wood material in a unit volume of wood. Eh? So uh, it is a ratio between uh, dry mass of the wood divided by the green volume of uh, the wood. And the measurement unit uh, usually uh, used to measure wood density is in a gram per cubic centimeter or a kilogram or ton uh, per cubic uh, meter. Eh? So uh, we know that uh, we have uh, a thousand of uh, three species in, in, uh, in a tropical region, especially Malaysia. So uh, the, the, the variation of the species uh, plays in roles in, in the variation in the wood density. So uh, today I'm going to uh, touch a bit on, on, the, uh, on this variation and see how, how it is connected with the uh, carbon sequestration and also uh, the, 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 the lifespan of, of uh, the species. Eh? So uh, what is carbon stock? Uh, I'm not going to explain detail on this because uh, we have uh, two days 
uh, seminar and uh, everybody is talking about carbon. But uh, I want to highlight here that uh, for those who are not familiar with the uh, uh, terminology or the, the terms uh, carbon stock, uh, if you see uh, charcoal, eh, if you see uh, charcoal, uh, actually the, the, the weight of the charcoal is the, the uh, carbon stock. Eh? So in, 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 a, in a layman terms, so the charcoal is the carbon eh, basically. But in terms of uh, ecology, uh, the carbon stock is referred to as the amount of living uh, matter in a given habitat, expressed either uh, as the weight of, of the organism uh, per unit area. So it, it can be measured in, in a unit area. So let's say you have, you have a, a one hectare of, of a, a wood or area or forest area, then uh, the weight of the, the woods is actually the carbon stock per hectare. But in, text, uh, in the context of uh, forest, it is refers to the amount of carbon stored in the, uh, the world ecosystem, mainly in living, living carbon stock and also soils. Eh? But to a lesser extent also in the dead wood uh, and, and litter. So this usually refers to carbon stock and uh, it is measured in, in a ton, in a ton carbon or a megagram. So one ton is equal to one megagram of uh, carbon. Okay, uh, next. Um, so I'm going to talk today on the uh, carbon sequestration rate and also the carbon content or carbon stock within the uh, some red list species that we have in Peninsula Malaysia. And uh, actually this, this study is, is uh, conducted uh, based on, on literature. So I didn't uh, do any, any physical uh, research, but, but uh, it is a compilation of, of uh, research that have been uh, done uh, by, by uh, the other researchers. Yeah. So uh, this is how the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the classification of of uh, red list uh, trees, uh, it is uh, divided into uh, three major categories, which is uh, uh, critically endangered, endangered, and also vulnerable. So uh, I'm going to list uh, all these uh, categories, and I, I'm going to give some examples of uh, wood density uh, that is stored or that that is uh, the properties of these uh, species within these categories. Huh? Next. <clears throat> Uh, so these are the, uh, the identified red list uh, trees in Peninsula Malaysia. Uh, so this red list is uh, covered only diptrocarp species. Eh? So we have other non diptrocarp species, many uh, <clears throat> many other species uh, under under non diptrocarp. But uh, we are going to focus on on the diptrocarp species. Eh? So uh, it divided into critically endangered, endangered and also vulnerable. Huh? <clears throat> Next. So based on the uh, studies that you have uh, that uh, conducted by, uh, for example, uh, Chave and also Rosaini and Gang, we uh, they found that that the average wood density for for deep Trocap species in Malaysia is around uh, 0 0.574 gram per uh, cubic centimeter, but uh, they are also found that 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 the the variation in terms of wood density also uh, depending on the size of the the, the growth stage of the trees. Eh? So we can see on the uh, on your right hand side. Uh, the DBH uh, 10 to 30 centimeter, which is uh, categorized under uh, the growing stage of the trees, the wood density was about uh, 0 0.45. And for the mature trees, uh, the, 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 the wood density is become uh, higher, which is uh, 0 0.56. So these are the average for all the diptrocarp species that, that, uh, that, we, that can be found in, in Malaysia. Eh? Okay, next. 
So how does this uh, wood density uh, affects or, or, or uh, connected with the carbon stock and also the uh, carbon sequestration? So uh, we know that that uh, the deep rock up trees are the uh, among among the uh, the best quality or the best uh, wood quality in terms of uh, timber uh, <clears throat> because because uh, because of the wood density eh, because of the wood density is is uh, is higher as compared to the other species eh? so we know that that the deep rock up species has higher, uh, high, heavier, and also have higher uh, uh, wood density uh, as compared to the other species. Eh? But uh, <clears throat> this is also uh, affect uh, the rate of sequestration, eh? the rate of sequestration and also the, the, the rate of uh, increment or growth rate of the trees. Eh? So we found that, that uh, the average growth rate of uh, deep rock up trees in natural condition was about two, two millimeter to five millimeter per year in terms of uh, increment, eh, girth increment. So if we measure uh, the DBH, uh, so let's say this year we, we measure uh, DBH is 10, point, uh, uh, 10 centimeter, then we measure next year is only about uh, 10.2 uh, centimeter. Eh? So the growth rate is very slow for, for uh, deep throw cup species eh? as compared to the other fast growing species. Eh? We, we, we can see after this. Uh, however, under a uh, controlled environment uh, such as we have in uh, Frim campus, a study uh, was done by, by uh, Dr. Ahmad Zahidi. I found that that the uh, the growth rate of uh, dry bilaps aromatica was about uh, 5.6 to 10.5 millimeter per year. So this is uh, under controlled condition uh, with a uh, specific uh, silviculture treatment and uh, with under uh, the planted uh, planted trees. Uh, it is not natural. So we can see that here, it, although the uh, the growth rate of uh, deep cup uh, uh, species are very slow, but under under uh, correct treatment and also uh, under the, the right environment, it can grow uh, faster. Eh? So next, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> it also found that the wood density is have also uh, a relation with the <clears throat> with the growth rate. Eh? So uh, <clears throat> and also the the lifespan or the the we call it a uh, uh, hayat uh, of of a specific uh, species. We found that the deep cup species uh, can live longer eh, as compared to the other fast growing species. Uh, it is also uh, because of the uh, wood density, eh, because uh, although the rate the growth rate are very slow, but it can uh, live longer eh, than than the other species. Eh? So this that is uh, among the among uh, the special uh, characteristic of uh, uh, deep throat cup trees. Eh? Okay, next. <clears throat> so these are uh, uh, this graph are showing the relationship between wood density and also the growth rate. So we can see here that uh, the growth rate have a negative proportion, direct proportion with the wood density. So the higher the wood density, uh, the slower the growth rate. Uh, so uh, it's the vice versa. Uh, we can see here that uh, for the fast growing species, although the uh, the wood density is low, but the growth rate are very fast. Eh? So next. Uh, so these are the list of uh, some uh, wood density uh, and also the growth rate of uh, particular species that uh, have been measured by, by, the, by the previous studies in Paso in Peninsular Malaysia and also in Lambe National Park in Sarawak. So we can see that here, uh, <clears throat> the growth rate of uh, diptrocup species is slower than uh, 
they are the non diptrocarp species huh? but the the wood density uh, are higher for uh, diptrocarp species and uh, lower for lower value for uh, non diptrocarp species huh? so next <clears throat> and these are the uh, some example of uh, relationship uh, between uh, mortality rate and also the 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 the, the wood density eh? the mortality or the in the other words is the uh, the survival eh? survival of, of the trees eh? so we can see here that uh, the wood density has a negative proportion with the uh, annual mortality and also the diameter increment in the other uh, in the other words uh, uh, we can say that uh, the higher the wood density, the the the, the slower uh, the increment and also the the longer the lifespan. Eh? But uh, the diameter increment, uh, if is uh, having a direct proportion or a positive proportion with the annual mortality. So uh, the slow, the faster uh, the increment, uh, the 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 higher the mortality rate. So we can see in, in, a, in a species uh, such as uh, Makaranga and also the other, the other fast growing species, uh, the diameter increment is very fast, but uh, the, the lifespan is uh, short, shorter than, than the deep drop up species. Eh? <clears throat> so next. <clears throat> uh, so these are the, the, the list that I uh, gathered that I, uh, compiled from the uh, global wood density database for the for some uh, red list species so we can see that uh, <clears throat> we can see here that um, almost all diptrocarp species have uh, higher wood density which is uh, more than 0.5 and at the bottom parts of the table, we can see some some uh, non non species, and also uh, some uh, fast growing species. We can see that the the the, the wood density where where there is a lower wood density, uh, the growth rate are faster, and also the carbon sequestration also uh, are faster eh, in terms of uh, uh, rate. Eh? So we can see here that uh, in terms of uh, selecting uh, species uh, to be planted for conservation or or, or uh, uh, for plantation for plantation purpose, we can uh, see in terms of, of uh, lifespan and also the, the the rate of sequestration from 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 this table. Eh? So next. <clears throat> Uh, so these are the uh, common pattern of uh, sequestration in uh, in all trees eh? in all trees uh, that we have in in our planet so basically it can be divided into uh, uh, two categories which are uh, diptrocarp species or slow slow growing uh, uh, species and also a fast growing species so we can see here that the saturation point for fast growing uh, species is is uh, is uh, saturated quickly at about uh, 15 years to 20 years uh, after that the these trees will become uh, will become dead eh? will become uh, dying uh, but uh, in the other hand for deep trocap species or uh, the slow growth species uh, the the lifespan is uh, longer eh? longer but the growth rate are slower as compared to the fast growing species so we can see here in this graph uh, the growth acceleration point will start at about uh, five point uh, uh, five years for fast growing species and uh, uh, 10 years for for deep trocap species so that's why uh, for plantation purpose they are uh, they are looking for fast growing species because they are going to harvest uh, within 15 years to 20 years uh, because uh, they need the volume, uh, they need the volume, uh, but they don't uh, need to wait uh, longer. Eh? So that is how uh, the, 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 the connection between wood density 
uh, carbon stock and also the growth rate and also the, the lifespan of uh, trees. Yeah? So next, <clears throat> in terms of uh, relationship between wood density, yeah, volume and also biomass, we can see in the, in the graphic, uh, uh, in the graphical term that uh, <clears throat> the higher the biomass or the higher the carbon stock, uh, the, the, the higher also the uh, wood density. Eh? Uh, so it is vice versa uh, for also the tr trunk volume. Uh, so basically the carbon stock and also the trunk volume is, is uh, uh, have direct proportion eh? uh, each other uh, and also the wood density. So uh, we can see in this graph. Eh? Okay, next. <clears throat> so uh, from the uh, from this uh, simple studies that we conducted, we found that uh, there is a connection or there is a relationship uh, between wood density, uh, carbon stock, and also the uh, carbon sequestration, and also the uh, growth rate, mortality, and also the uh, lifespan of uh, tree species. Uh, so we can we can uh, we can uh, consider this kind of uh, this kind of uh, characteristic yeah, in, in uh, choosing the right species even for conservation, either for conservation or, or, or plantation purpose. Yeah. So uh, whenever there is a high wood density, the carbon stock also high, but the growth uh, rate is low. And also the carbon sequestration rate also uh, becomes low. Yeah. But the mortality rate, uh, uh, is also low, but lifespan is longer as compared to the uh, fast growing species that has low wood density, uh, low carbon stock, uh, but fast growing, but also uh, fast uh, uh, carbon sequestration rate. Uh, but the mortality is, is uh, high. Eh? So uh, the, 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 the species that has uh, low wood density will become uh, will become uh, die quickly as compared to the deep trock up species and uh, other species that has a higher wood density. Uh, I think that that's, that's all uh, for my presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Eh? Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Hamdan, for such an uh, enlightening presentation on the wood density growth rates and their relationship. Uh, so uh, whoever has questions, please use the Q&A box uh, to send some questions uh, to us, to the presenters who have presented today. Uh, we will surely answer all the questions that you have posted. So uh, with that, I would like to move to our next uh, presenter. So our next presenter is uh, Dr. Nick Noor Afida uh, Binti Nick Ali. So she is affiliated with the Forestry and the Environmental uh, Division in FRIM. Uh, Dr. Nick has a PhD uh, from UKM in biology. Uh, her field of expertise is forest ecology. Her current projects and interests include uh, strengthening the role of forests in addressing climate change in terms of forest adaptation through free air carbon dioxide enrichment system. So without uh, much ado, I would like her to present her slides today, which is uh, titled Assessment of Carbon Sequestration Potential of Red Leaf Species in the Comfrey Air CO2 and Enrichment Plot. So the floor is yours, Dr. Nick. All right. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jayani. And hi, everyone. My name is Nick Noor Afida. I would like to present on behalf of Dr. Azia Mufti. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here with us. Uh, so I would like to present the study entitled Assessment of Carbon Sequestration Potential of Red List Free Species in Tekam Free Air CO2 Enrichment Plot at Tekam Forest Reserve. Right, for the introduction, uh, the global average atmospheric carbon dioxide today is higher than at any point in at least the past 800,000 years. In the coming years, CO2 level will continue to increase further as 
a result, 2021 is expected to be the first year on record that sees CO2 levels of more than 50% above pre-industrial level. The role of plant diversity, particularly of rare species in ecosystem functioning, for example, carbon storage has been mostly studied with little practical application to the conservation of tropical forests. Noticing Malaysia as mega diverse tropical tropical country where resources are plenty and its conservation is frequently and substantially challenged by socio-economic uh, priorities. Uh, the country as CO2 enrichment, the face experiment was established at compartment 84, the Forest Reserve, Jerantut Pahang to allow study on the effects of elevated CO2 towards plant and ecosystem grown under natural condition. Okay. The, oh, I couldn't. Yeah, for the objective, there are two object objectives which uh, to examine conservation status of um, of trees in the camp phase plot and also to assess carbon sequestration potential of tree species in the higher CO2 concentration environment. Okay, let's take a look at the methodology. This experiment, uh, Tekam Fee system was established in compartment 84, Tekam Forest Reserve, Jerantu Pahang, which is a production forest with area of 228 hectare. This forest is regulated under the management of the Jerantu District Forest Office, Forestry Department of Negeri Pahang. Okay. A square plot of 0 0.06 25 hectare was established and hexagon structure of six meter long each side was built within the plot. In our right is the brief diagram of the operation of this circumfi system. It begins with the production of CO2 gases from the gas tank at the control house and then the CO2 gases released through the flow pipe into the air space within the phase hexagon. Then the data of CO2 concentration, temperature, light intensity, and air humidity were measured by the four in one sensor uh, daily. And the data transmitted through LAN, LAN or Wi Fi into the computer. And we also have uh, data monitoring via Android phone. And for your information, the CO2 elevated concentration at the cafe system is about 500 to 650 ppm. Okay, and then for the data, data collection and uh, analysis, all flora with a uh, height of 15 centimeter and above in the plot were marked and measured using measuring tape. And virtual specimen with fruits and flower if present for all trees uh, were collected for identification purposes. And the elementary methods of estimating biomass of forest community is the most common as it is non-destructive and less tedious than other methods. We are using Chave et al. for above ground biomass and Mokani et al. for below ground biomass. Okay, for the results, the species composition consists of 1,883 individuals represented by 478 species from 83 families who counted from the study plots. And there were only 1,108 individuals represented by 84 species from 25 families who were listed in red list of threatened species. One species of critically endangered, nine, uh, near threatened, five vulnerable, and 69 disconcerned. Uh, Cholera palicensis from family T. which is Karas, was categorized as critically endangered by IUCN list.org, but not listed. 
at the national level by Young et al. 2021. Um, only three individuals of this species were found, were found in the plot with 0.01 tonne carbon per hectare carbon stock. Okay. So nine species were listed as near threatened, consists of uh, Bekak, Kekatung, Mempisang, and two from Penarahan family, uh, Meristikase, and three from uh, Nyatuh family, Sapotase. Um, and, and one from Diptrokapase, which is Soria Longisperma. And four of them were not listed at the national level by Young at all. 2021, the most frequent, frequent found was Nyatuh Jamba, Palakium hexandrum, with 23 individuals of 0 0.07 uh, tonne carbon per hectare carbon stock. Okay, for the vulnerable species, there are five of them found in the plot were Medan, uh, Ramin Pipit, Marawan Bunga, Mata Ulat, and Nyatu Tembaga, but only Merawan Bunga were listed as vulnerable at the national level and only one individual of it were found uh, with uh, 0.04 tonne carbon per hectare carbon stock. Okay, mm, so I would like to share seven highest carbon storage and sequestration potential at species level accounted at the study plot. As we can see, Diptrocarpus baudii from family Diptrocarpaceae, which is Kerang Bulu, that was listed as near threatened by IUCN readlist.org, while least concerned by Young et al. 2021, has the most highest carbon stock and CO2 equivalent sequestered potential of 76.87 tonne carbon dioxide per hectare. Okay. So for the family level, Diptrocarpaceae has the highest carbon storage and sequestration potential at family level uh, of 102.54 tonne carbon per hectare and 375.98 tonne carbon dioxide per hectare, followed by Fabaceae, uh, Fabaceae is the legume family, and Stercoliaceae, Meristicaceae, Icacinaceae, Chrysobalanaceae, and Berseraceae. Okay, so for the conclusion, as I only mentioned, presented this, the CO2, the carbon stock, uh, not the uh, carbon sequestration, but carbon sequestration uh, is only the, the potential because uh, we, uh, we were lack of the 3H data. So further work is needed to determine how pervasive the carbon deposit in forest biomass are able to provide an idea of the forest ability to reduce the concentration of carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere uh, by precisely knowing the age of the tree to get the exact amount of carbon sequestration value. So however, this study requires a long time where the collection of this information is important to develop long-term plans for the management and conservation of the tree species. And uh, we would like to express our appreciation to the Government of Malaysia for funding of the research from the 11 Malaysia Plan, Forestry Department of Peninsula Malaysia, Forestry Department of Pahang, and especially to Jerantut District Forest Office for permission to establish the Tekampi system at the study site. And not to forgotten all staff from Climate Change and Forestry Program for their dedicated work through, during the fieldwork. Um, these are the references. With that, I thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you, Dr. Nick, for such a wonderful uh, presentation, enlightening us on your work in the uh, phase, uh, phase research, which is uh, ongoing in one of our frame research station. Uh, so uh, anyone who has questions for Dr. Nick, please type your questions or even your comments in the Q&A chat box. Uh, we are waiting for it to be populated in order for us to send it to our presenters. So without much uh, further ado, uh, please allow me to introduce uh, the next speaker for our session, uh, Ms. Abba Chauhan. 
So Ms. Abba Chow Khan is a project manager in Biodiversity Impact Assessment and Mitigation Plan, which is funded by the World Bank. Huh? So um, she is affiliated with the Sage Himalaya Consultancy in India. Uh, she has a uh, she has a master's in MBA, uh, Master's of Business Administration, as well as a BTEC in uh, Computer Science. Her field of expertise is uh, forest policies and biodiversity mitigation plan efficacy, biodiversity impact assessment, and a lot of uh, other things related to the ecological side. Her current project is the uh, Sage Himalaya Consultancy is working on biodiversity impact assessment and mitigation plans uh, in Himachal Pradesh, India. So today, she will be sharing with us on enhancing carbon sequestration potential by ex situ plantations. So I invite Ms. Abba Chauhan to present her slides. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Jiani, for the introduction. And greetings of the day to all my dear participants and uh, all the presenters. So I will start with the presentation. So I am going to cover about enhancing carbon sequestration potential by ex situ plantations. And um, so this is prepared by me and Dr. A.P. Clark, who is uh, my supervisor for the dissertation. So uh, as Dr. Rajani has already, already introduced me, so my company, uh, Sage Himalaya Consultancy, is with the uh, IFS officers who are retired, who retired in year 2020. And uh, with the team of scientists and uh, from Himachal Pradesh State Biodiversity Board. And Excuse me, Ms. Abba, I'm very sorry to interrupt you. Can you put your slides in uh, presentation mode? Because we the, the slides are not in presentation mode at the moment. Is it not? I can see that it is. Let me just try again. Is it okay now? Uh, now it's okay. It's in full screen. Thank you. You can continue. All right. Thank you so much. So a quick breakdown of the objectives. So we have to cover about XC2, which is outside or offsite or away from natural resources, a uh, natural location. And carbon sequestration is the storage of uh, greenhouse gas, which is carbon dioxide in natural sites, thus removing it from atmosphere and reducing uh, global warming. And red listed tree species, as we all know, are the con conservation assessments of species which are compiled together and what is called as red listed by IUCN. So these are the different uh, sequestration routes that uh, usually uh, are accepted globally, but we have to look at the biological sequestration potential so it's uh, so Dr. Uh, Pete Smith, which is chair in plant and social science from University of Aberdeen. He says that it's almost impossible that we would hit two degrees Celsius and even less so 1.5 degrees Celsius without some sort of negative emission technology. So this is uh, this is the con this is uh, this was decided in the convention, uh, which is known as the Paris climate change. And they decided that we should be able to hold the temperature two degrees and below. But there are multiple uh, experts who believe that it is not possible unless we have some negative emissions technology. And carbon sequestration potential is itself a biological uh, method to do the same. And it has a huge potential to hold the temperature well below two degrees Celsius. So this is one of the method which is known as carbon farming. So most farming is intended to produce something that harvests from the land. But carbon farming, on the other hand, is opposite. So its potential is 1 to 13 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year. And it, it happens more with the, the trees also. And the maturity is good to go with the opportunities to improve, improve. And the advantages is that it is inexpensive and multiple benefits, including improved soil and water quality. So to uh, to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, the soil and moisture conservation practices should also be a part 
of uh, the biodiversity conservation practices. And carbon farming is one of the methods to do that. Then we have afforestation and reforestation potential. So it holds a potential of one to 14 gigaton carbon dioxide per year. And it is good to go with the opportunities to improve if one has to work in this field. The, the intergovernmental inter panel of climate change estimates that a single hectare, which is 2.5 acres of forest can take up to somewhere between 1.5 and 30 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year, depending on the kind of trees and the potential and how, do, how old they are and, and the kind of climate that they can grow in. But it, it has one disadvantage that it is land intensive. And the limitations with the, this method is that it needs to be carefully with accounting, uh, accounting so as not to reward increasing forests in one place and destroying them in another. So an ecosystem services also needs to be uh, taken into account for this method. So why afforestation? So forests are stabilizing forces for the climate. They regulate ecosystems and protect biodiversity, play an integral part in carbon cycle, supports livelihoods and supply goods and services that can drive sustainable growth. And they're also one of the best solutions to address the climate change which is uh, happening right now. So a research was conducted and um, the research, research associate uh, came out with a conclusion that the potential loss of the species is a symptom of widespread destruction and exploitation of mangrove forests, which is one of the key forest area in tropical areas like uh, tropical forests like that of Malaysian. And mangroves from one of the most important tropical habitats that support many species and loss can affect marine terrestrial biodiversity. So there is an urgent protection needed for two mangrove species that are listed as critically endangered. The highest probability of extinction measured by IUCN Red List is Soneratia graffiti and Brugaria hennessy. So mangroves are vital to coastal communities as they protect them from the damage caused by tsunami waves, erosions and storms. So the potential is yet unknown but maturity is also uh, good to go with the opportunities to improve. But there are the limitations with this plantation as that the, with the forest ecosystem, they need to take care of, to not, the, not to uh, destroy the already existing area and then rehabilitate the net gain. So why is it important? It is important for Malaysia because Malaysia was recently ranked 132, 132nd in global sustainability index. Malaysia's em emissions amount to 250 million tons in 2018, up to 241.6 million tons in 2017. And the main sources of emissions were energy, mobility, and waste ending up in landfills. So this is about my project. So I was part of biodiversity impact assessment that happened in Himalayas. So this is the mitigation of impact, and this is the management framework that we followed. So we did preliminary biodiversity screening, and then we collected the baseline data, and then we did the assessment, and then a management plan or a mitigation plan was formed. And then implementation of BMPs, we decided that we should uh, monitor and manage the same for next five to six years. And a monitoring committee was set up, and then remote, uh, reporting committee was set up. So synergies in ecosystem services, it is basically the codependence of uh, social communities on the forests. So globally, around 1.6 billion people, which is 25% of the world's population, they rely on forests for their uh, livelihoods, many of whom are world's poorest. So this is their only source of income or their livelihood. So forest provides nearly 75 to 100 billion US dollars per year in goods and services, which is in global terms. So forests are also home to 80% of world's terrestrial uh, biodiversity. And synergy can also be calculated or can also benefit the people in form of PES, which is payment of economic services. So this is spatial and tempo, uh, temporal uh, dimensions of ecological effects of biodiversity degradation. So this is what happens when biodiversity is degraded. It is measured in, uh, so the y-axis is measuring it in minutes, hours, months, years, and centuries. And then what kind of effects do we see 
when the degradation has started so as soon as some as soon as a linear infrastructure or a road is constructed we see that water flow or the natural streams are being uh, degraded as well and because of that there it ha it happens that natural course of action or natural course of uh, direction or uh, movement of animals is also barricaded because of the same and so is habitat fragmented for vegetation for faunal diversity and hence we lose a lot of exotic or native species of the same area so this was the study area that uh, we conduct conducted the biodiversity impact assessment so it is indian state of himachal pradesh it lies on foothills of himalayas and we had 128 km stretch which uh, which was focused as tranche 1 and it was approved by the bank so we took 500 meter radius so the zone was called as core impact zone and then 1500 meters which was the immediate buffer zone so the core impact zone was the zone which was immediately impacted because of any linear infrastructure or any sort of development or any sort of construction for that matter and then 1500 uh, 1500 meters was immediate buffer zone which which uh, which wasn't uh, very immediately impacted but it was impacted so 5 km radius was extended buffer zone so in case there were any uh, natural uh, habitats of uh, any kind of animals so that's when we took 5 km in uh, in our focus and the study and analysis was delineated in a topo sheet of 1 is to 50000 scale and we recovered these maps from forest survey of india so this was this is a pictorial representation of our project influence area core impact zone immediate buffer zone and extended buffer zone and the both side the zones were 7 km each which was which which is 14 km in total was our project influence area and this is how we laid the grid on the map which was recovered by forest survey of india so the grid counts that we did was uh, for each road we divided the grids in the same way that i've shown uh, in the map so the data was analyzed for frequency abundance of the species depending on number of sightings based on primary data information available so we also calculated ivi the basal area of the vegetation the density their frequency and that's how we came to a conclusion of what kind of conservation practices we need to uh, adapt to save the biodiversity in that area so this is the format that we used We used a uh, grid number and then uh, the longitude and latitude land use of what for what land use is basically for what the land is used like is it a forest or densely populated forest or is it a vegetation area is it an agricultural area and that's how we this is like basically the format that we used for the field visits so after uh, after all the field visits that we did for 6 months which was an extensive time so the, these are the species that we uh, suggested them for roadside plantations and for the plantations in the area which are impacted because of the construction so the dumping site plantation are basically uh, after the construction a lot, lot of muck muck is uh, dumped so the dumping sites becomes barren land with no sort of vegetation so we suggested them to plant uh, these species in those areas so we also uh, suggested agroforestry species for the benefit of ecosystem services and for the benefit of people who live around the area and these are the fruit and fodder species that we suggested but these are indian species and there has to be because it it is in northern himalaya so the tropical and northern himalaya species would be very different anyway so the impact of biodiversity during road by, road widening was expected to be minimum damage or loss to be 50 meters on both side so we suggested uh, the bank to rehabilitate up to 50% of the damaged biodiversity which is 640 hectares of land so the main components of biodiversity were uh, afforestation and uh, soil conservation so this is uh, the whole activity that we did so concluding with with the malaysian tropical biodiversity so it is a major hot spot for the tropical uh, vegetation and for the carbon sequestration potential for around the globe and the areas that i have highlighted here are 
the yellow areas in the vascular plant uh, diversity will show you the tropical biodiversity around the globe and uh, same with the floral uh, and faunal diversity so what i need everyone to think about is the co benefits for biodiversity from carbon based conservation management in human modified tropical forests and also the dependence of uh, people on these forests be it their livelihood be it anything how they can benefit from it because a lot of people are dependent on tropical forests for their day to day activities even even for their for their salaries so to say so the native diverse forests might provide more reliable carbon sequestration than uh, low diversity plantation so this point this point will uh, actually focus on that we should not uh, focus on uh, the monoculture uh, plantation of species because in india what happened was to keep the forests at 22% uh, 22% richness in india monoculture uh, forestation happened and because of that our carbon sequestration potential has lowered down to a lot of level because it was extensive plantation of sal or eucalyptus so monoculture is not advisable however native diverse forest native means the species that belong to the area which are which might not be uh, live now or which are endangered which are which are threatened so those kind of forest they provide more reliable uh, carbon uh, sequestration than low diversity plantation thank you that is all from my side uh, thank you very much miss abba for such a remarkable presentation i think your uh, last slide uh, summed out a lot of uh, key messages especially what we are doing in malaysia as well when right. we are focusing on indigenous species rather than uh, monoculture species or exotic species uh, thank you for highlighting it in your presentation so our q and a box is still available uh, before we close the session for the evening later on please if you have any questions for miss abba dear participants do shoot your uh, questions in the q and a box we will take it up right after after the session so thank you miss abba we will move to the next uh, presenter uh, the next presenter for this day <coughs> would be uh, mr afzaniza muda so uh, mr afzaniza muda has uh, unfortunately has apologized that he cannot be live during uh, this webinar today however he has uh, sent us his uh, video presentation so miss <coughs> afzaniza is a uh, Previously was a research officer with FRIM. Now he's a re uh, officer with the Forest Department of uh, Malaysia. He has a bachelor in science in, in, in environmental science and management, as well as a master's holder. His field of expertise is carbon stocks assessment in peat swamp forest. So his current projects uh, in FRIM were related to carbon stock assessment in peat swamp forest, as well as the tropical lowland dipterocarp forest in Paso Forest Reserve. So uh, without much ado, I would uh, like to... Um, pass it to the secretariat to allow them to play the video uh, slide presentation which has been prepared by Mr. Afzan Nizam for this uh, last session. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is very good evening to the chairperson and to all the esteemed participants of the webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend our gratitude and appreciation for letting us share some of our research findings at the regional webinar on ex situ conservation and carbon sequestration potentials of red list tree species. Uh, my name is Afzan Nizam, uh, on behalf of our co-worker from Climate Change and Policy Program 3, and also our counterpart from Mission from Onboard and POB. Uh, I'll be presenting our some of our research findings entitled Gonistalis bankinus, Ramin Malawis, and Shoria platycarpa, Marantipaya, Review of Threatened Tree Species of Pitsong Forest in Peninsular Malaysia. The slide shows are the overview of the 12 bird listed species that are present in the Pitsong Forest, namely in our site, which is in Pekan Forest Reserve at Compartment 75. Uh, the 
registered species uh, cross-check with the IUCN uh, listings. The IUCN stands for the International Union for Conservation of Nature with List of Threatened Species Criteria. There are three threatened species uh, category, namely critically endangered or CR, which here are present, being presented later, which is Goni stylus bunkenus or Ramin malawis, and Shoria platycarpa or Morandi fire. The, the next is category vulnerable or VU, which is two steps lower than the critically endangered. There are six species altogether Tetrama ista glabra, Tenolophon parvifolius, Sandoricum baccarianum, Santeria religiosa, Rosfieldia crassifolia, and also Decrodes macrocarpa. And then lastly is the near threatened or NT, which is one step lower than vulnerable. There are four species altogether, which is Aglaia rubiginosa, Lanconella maingayu, Shorea leposuma, Mystica, and Mystica loriana. Uh, to assign a category for a threatened species, there are generally five criteria being used. The first one is the population reduction. The second, second one is geographic range in the form of extent of occurrence or EOO, basically means uh, area of occupancy. The third one is a small population size and decline. Uh, the fourth one is a very small or restricted population. And the fifth one is a quantitative analysis indicating the probability of extinction in the wild. The pictures shown here are Gonzalez Bankenus on the left and the Shura Patikarpa on the right. As for Ramin Malawis or Gonzalez Bankenus, the diameter at breast side of DBH range between 66 to 67 centimeters and the crown height range between 39 to 42 uh, meters. While for Shoria platycarpa or Marantifier, the diameter at breast side or DBH range uh, between 41 to 71 centimeter, and the crown height range between 13 to 29 meters, slightly lower than Ramin Malawis. Um, uh, within Malaysia, Ramin is found on the uh, International Trade in Endangered Species Act 2008 and is subject to strict logging and trade permission with the scientist documentation following the uh, uh, National Forestry Act, NFA. Within Malaysia, permanent forest reserve area, a 30-year-old uh, cutting cycle is operated and trees are not harvested until they exit 20 centimeter at diameter breast of breast height or DBH. So here we can see that both are uh, Gonistylus bankinus and Shorea platycarpa are uh, very mature and big trees. So the 30 cutting cycle uh, according to the SFM, Sustainable Forest Management Regime. And a fixed number of commercial trees also have to be retained with the hectare of logging to encourage regeneration. And so here you can see that um, the threatened severity of the particular species uh, from left to right, starting from the not evaluated, it goes to data deficient, which they are very uh, uh, data insufficient data to determine. And um, it goes to least consume or LC, Nitratin and T, which are presented earlier, vulnerable, BU, endangered, EN, and critically endangered, uh, CR, and the next two, which is the most severe in terms of extinction, which is extinct in the wild or EW, and also extinct EX. So just bear in mind that this um, uh, threatened criteria, uh, threatened um, category, are not fixed. For instance, um, both species are. Uh, Gonistalis bankinus and also Shora platycarpa at the time of assessment are uh, uh, categorized as critically endangered or CR. So without any uh, conservation effort in situ or ex situ, it can change to higher, um, uh, higher category of severity or threatened. Uh, threaten.
which is in uh, extinct in the world, or it could it could be uh, extinct. The diagram shows you are the forest profile of a typical virgin peatstone forest or PSF. Uh, note that uh, the highlighted uh, the Connie Stylus Bankenos, numbered 21, 29, and 40. They are very tall trees. And in general, there are three different layers of trees that make up canopy, namely upper layer, middle layer, and uh, understory. So based on our observation, uh, Connie Stylus Bankenos at our site uh, are really tall and big trees in terms of diameter and also height. Uh, and therefore, they become the main canopy layer species that grows of more than 40 meters tall, which also refer to as emulsions. Uh, as for Shoria paticarpa, uh, it is considered as a middle layer canopy between 20 to 20 meters tall. So the objective of the study is to conduct biomass and carbon stock assessment studies of Gonistylus bankenus. Ramin Malawis and Shoria Platycarpa Maranti fire in natural or pristine condition. And subsequently, after we have conducted biomass and carbon stocking, we can see whether there are some changes in terms of biomass and carbon stock increment or decrement for the pristine pit song forest for the year 2016 and 2018. So for the materials and method, there are 25 plots all, all together that make up one hectare of uh, area. And the size of each plot is 20 meters and 20 meters. And all trees of at least 10 centimeters and above in diameter of parasite or DPH were measured for stand structure and density. Three basic forest stand metrics are three basal area tree volume and stand density. And next, um, the elementary equations uh, were used to calculate biomass and that employ three variables, namely diameter, which is in, in this case dbh, the canopy height, the h, and also the wood density, which is the default value from the uh, agroforestry database that are specific for uh, pit swarm uh, species. And carbon stocking was calculated by multiplying the sum of biomass with a C fraction. And for this, we are using the IPCC of 0.47 to convert biomass, dry matter of biomass, to carbon stocking. So we come straight to the result. Uh, what we show, what is shown is the top 12 of three species are not according to any orders. The first two is uh, Gonistylus bankenus and also Shoya platycarpa. And the three um, basic parameters, which is uh, tree density expressed in indi individual trees per hectare, basal area, uh, which refer to the site occupancy which means um, how big or how small the trees are uh, above ground and express in meter square per, per hectare of area. And lastly is the total volume, which is um, uh, expressed in meter cubic per hectare. And overall, uh, from the three categories of uh, threatened species, uh, the total uh, density of the Red listed species in our plot is 95 stems per hectare of area. That gives a, a basal area of 14.64 and a very uh, significant volume of 212.37 meter cubic per hectare. And the, this 95 red listed species uh, are census from the total individual at our one hectare plot, which is 462 individual trees per hectare. So uh, we can say that almost 20% or one fifth of the total individual stems in pit forests forest uh, 
considered as um, threatened species or red listed species. So we take uh, we focus on the two uh, Ramin Malawis and Maranti Paya. The stocking density for both uh, 17 and 14 stems per hectare. That gives a total area 4.68 and 3.54, while the total volume is very much higher for uh, Gorisalis bankenos because um, they are very big in size and tall. Uh, the table shows the stand inventory of Gonisalis Bankenus and Shoya Platicarpa at Kan Forest Reserve during the assessment year of 2019. So the first line is on the Gonisalis Bankenus or Ramin Malawis. Uh, the, the census period uh, are two years, are, are taken during two year intervals, which is in 2016 and 2018. Uh, Gonisalis Bankenos, the total biomass is 35.45 and 2018 28.93. That gives the total carbon 13.87 and 19.15 in two years of observations. This shows increment from 2016 to 2018 of 11.22 ton per hectare for biomass. And 50% of biomass is a carbon stocking, which is 5.28 ton carbon per hectare. This is the potential specifications if we convert to the um, ton carbon per hectare, if we have the age of the trees. As for Shoria Patikarpa or Maranti Paya in 2016 and 2018, the total biomass is 34.94 and slight decrease in 2018 which is 32.11, that gives the total carbon also subsequently decrease. So the decrement, uh, 2.83 ton per hectare for biomass and uh, proportionately with the carbon stocking uh, at 1.33 ton carbon per hectare. Uh, we observe the decrease uh, in terms of biomass and also carbon stocking due to the mortality rate, which is uh, three deaths that happens um, in our ecological plot. So as a conclusion, uh, the commission of biomass during stand development was accompanied by seed accretion stored at the study site under pristine condition. So without any uh, interference, without any uh, human uh, activities or anthropogenic factors, uh, we can see that uh, accumulation of biomass uh, proportionally uh, increasing with the carbon stocking at the site. Um, the next one is um, in regards to the theme of the webinar today, the accident conservation is still ongoing for both species. Uh, for Gonisalis Bankenus or Ramin Malawis um, has been conducted uh, for ex situ inside our campus. Uh, and for Shore Patikapa, they are still uh, no concrete uh, conservation effort uh, for that particular species. And thirdly, apart from three diameter, uh, mortality rate uh, here means uh, three death and stand recruitment, which is the new growth, should be assessed simultaneously uh, to determine forest productivity and stand dynamic in the long run. This is one of the picture taken from the Gonistalis Vangenus publication. Uh, the, the species is um, planted in 1993 on non uh, pit song forest song at Queen Campus as part of the ex situ conservation effort. So this is the main references for the listing, uh, apart from the global assessment, uh, which is IUCN. Database um, also adapt to the uh, localized uh, or national assessment, namely on Malaysia plant rate list. Uh, there are two versions. The, the earlier one is in 2010, and the most recent one is in 2021. Uh, the rate list uh, assessment is conducted as part of the 
a big project and uh, uh, it's a collaboration project with our counterpart uh, at POP. Um, uh, for that, Okay, uh, thank you. I believe that uh, Mr. Afzal Nizam's uh, presentation has ended. So we are open to the Q&A sessions. Uh, I would like to invite all the speakers for today uh, to open their video uh, uh, webcam as well as uh, unmute when they are given any questions. There were one question which has been already uh, answered by uh, Dr. Nick. Eh? The question was on... Uh, hold on, let me check. It was on the uh, differences of carbon stock from endangered tree species between areas enriched with CO2 with the area which is not enriched. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Nick, for answering the questions. Any more questions from the floor, from the participants? We have several more minutes before we end, uh, we pass over the session to the moderator. If there are no questions, I can ask one or two questions for the speakers who have not been asked any questions. If it's okay, uh, Dr. Hamdan, is it okay? Uh, I would like to ask a question to you. Are you here? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh, Dr. Hamdan, based on your study, uh, what do you think? Uh, should we move forward into planting more dipterocarp species or fast-growing species? And how uh, can we suggest this to our national legislators in terms for climate change mitigation? Can you just comment on that? Yeah, it's uh, depending on uh, the objective of your plantation. If it is hmm. going to be... Uh, for conservation purpose and also for carbon stock uh, generation, I think it, it uh, should go to the uh, dipterocarp species. Eh? So we have uh, a number of uh, species that is available even in, in our campus. Uh, but if you are going to uh, to do some some uh, enrichment planting eh? or uh, for 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 economic purpose, then you should go for a fast growing species. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hamdan. I hope uh, this is, uh, I think it's quite important what you shared uh, and hopefully we could uh, follow the objectives that we need and plant the uh, species accordingly. I have one more question to Ms. Abba. Uh, Ms. Abba, uh, you mentioned that uh, you planted some uh, species in the dumping sites. So what were the challenges uh, you or your team uh, encountered during planting in this species, uh, planting this species in the dumping site? Can you just share with us? Is Ms. Abba here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Can you please okay. ask, ask that again? I'm oh, sure. <laughs> okay, Ms. Abba, what I was asking was that uh, you did mention in one of your slides that you uh, suggested several species to be planted in the dumping site. Looking at the area, the dumping site, uh, I'm guessing that it would, would have been quite degraded. What were the challenges that you faced in planting these species or uh, in this uh, dumping site? So the major challenge that we faced was uh, stakeholder engagement because we wanted to make it as a campaign and we wanted to make it uh, that uh, the people who live around the area are involved, the forest officers are involved, range officers are involved. So that was a bit of challenge. And the reason for that is the awareness. So our research also concluded that uh, all these uh, uh, regulations or all these laws are passed on national or international levels, but they somehow boils down to public participation, which does not happen because they are not aware of the rights. Mm -hmm. They're not aware that they can be paid because of ecosystem services. So our main goal was to do that. And that took a lot of time. So public awareness and uh, public participation and stakeholder engagement for that matter, because of corruption levels, of course. So that is a challenge. So we need to, make people aware that we are not saving uh, the planet for anything. We are saving it for ourselves, which is very basic. And somehow the message is getting lost. 
So that was our main challenge. Thank you very much for sharing your experience with us, Ms. Abba. We really thank appreciate you, it. So we thank all the presenters for today for sharing your slides. So uh, I would like to pass the next session to our moderator. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and Dr. Ho, you can take over from now. Yes. Um, thank you, Dr. Jenny, for sharing the session five and also for sharing your very own experiences with us today. Um, next on our program is the closing keynote paper, which will be delivered by Dr. Mohamed Zaki Abdullah, Director of the Forestry Biotechnology Division in FRIM. Dr. Zaki holds a master's degree in plant physiology and obtained his PhD in plant genetics from the National University of Malaysia. With over 25 years of experiences, Dr. Zaki specializes in tree and herb breeding, which I'm sure he will share with us uh, in his presentation soon. He is currently leading a national project on enhancing germplasm bank towards production and of quality one. and okay. accredited planting materials. Let me now invite Dr. Mohamed Zaki to deliver his presentation. Dr. Zaki, you may please. Yes, on three. Can you hear my, my, my voice? Yes, we can hear your voice, doctor. It's good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, moderator, for the kind introduction. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, uh, this is the last paper for today's uh, uh, webinar. And then the title given to me is uh, on the current development in biotechnology for ex situ conservation of at least three species. So please bear with me about more or less about 10 minutes. Eh? Okay. This, what is uh, about the technology and why? And then all of us have heard about biotechnology, but what exactly is biotechnology? Is not my intention today to dwell on the rudiments of biotechnology, but I will provide some information about uh, biotechnology and how it is related to this webinar team on uh, conservation of red list uh, three species. Biotechnology involves the use of living organisms, including microorganisms, to obtain products and improve plants or animals. Biotechnologies are fundamental oriented to improve the efficiency of production uh, techniques, both in agriculture, industrial, and biomedical uh, field. The next question you may ask is why biotechnology? Biotechnology, just like any other technology, has its own pros and cons. When used for the right purpose, in the right way, biotechnology brings advantages, but could also cause disadvantages when handled in appropriately. Biotechnology basically provides advantages in environmental protection, if higher yield and improvement in human health. Here, I would like to state five reasons for choosing biotechnology. First and foremost, uh, biotechnology has the ability to raise capability to a new level of position and accuracy, for example, in industrial uh, production processes and diagnostic kits. Biotechnology also helps in providing rapid, sensitive, and accurate alternatives. It increases yield for instant production of plants with better tolerance to, to successful conditions. <clears throat> Additionally, biotechnology can be, can be used in food industries for increasing supplies and preservation, locate and remove the allergy causing uh, potting. It also helps in uh, conserving and utilizing resources economically and sustainably, uh, while at the same time reduce uh, waste uh, through the advent of biodegradables. The DNA of uh, chimpanzees and us is very familiar putting them as our closet relative in evolutionary terms. It was recently discovered that uh, previously called Chang, Chang DNA, 
which was deemed to have no function that made us different from chimpanzee. This and many more amazing discovery are not possible without uh, biotechnology. Advance in biotechnology in various applications had come a long uh, way. There's a, a pipeline of application for biotechnology, but here I'm only listing a few. Eh? Revolution in agricultural biotechnology may be the earliest and has seen change from merely improving production to conserve and protecting the environment, including people's health. This new finding on genetic engineering, uh, scientists are now able to produce plants with enhanced yield, uh, nutritional content, desired texture, color, flavor, growing season, impact disease uh, resistant, and other properties of production crops. Another important yet often uh, neglected field where biotechnology plays an equally important role in uh, in bioremediation. Bioremediation is growing rapidly rapidly, and has been uh, commercially applied for the treatment of, uh, of uh, hazardous waste and contaminated sites. It also perceived as a more environmental friendly and public accepted means of cleaning and reducing harmful uh, effect of toxic pollutant that are easier disposed or accidentally uh, released around us. A wide range of new microorganisms have been discovered that are able to degrade high stable toxic organic uh, aerobics, yet still many pol pol pollutants uh, persist in the environment. Thus, the use of a genetically engineered microorganism and uh, uh, construction of, bio of bacteria with multiple pathways can be useful for more recalcitrant pollutants. In the next, in context of forestry, uh, biotechnology has provided knowledge on how to mitigate the effect of forest uh, fragmentation on genetic diversity, promote gene flow by managing uh, uh, tropical forest ecosystem for pollution, seed dispersal, and soil symbiont, decide providing solution to, to evil increase commercial demand for, for food and uh, pulp. Okay. In Malaysia, our first uh, national biotechnology policy or NBP 1.0 was formulated in 2005. We have uh, nine trusts supporting this policy. Out of uh, these nine trusts, uh, FRIM, Forest Research Institute, is actively involved in five following uh, five uh, trusts. You can see in the in the circle in uh, green color. Okay, is uh, number one is agriculture biotechnology development, and then second, healthcare biotechnology development, third, industrial biotechnology development, fourth, uh, R and D and technology acquisition last on the human capital uh, development. There are, of course, unlimited fields where biotechnology can be applied to cope with our dynamic lifestyle and the imminent threat of climate change and diseases. But in line with the theme of our webinar, uh, I will focus the rest of my talk on biotechnology for conservation, with particular interest uh, on the first three. Yeah? In FRIM, under the umbrella of forestry biotechnology division, uh, we have uh, three different uh, programs and one center supporting the research, development, commercialization, and innovation, uh, aiming at elevating the forestry industry through biotechnology. These three programs are tree breeding uh, program, biotechnology program, and forest construction program. So each program is independent yet supporting one another through an in intricate web of activity that start uh, from uh, nurturing or a seed or cell to a tree. Yeah? The tree breeding program uh, undertake the task to enhance national gympasm for conservation and for plant breeding. 
In terms of uh, conservation, the program has been actively collecting red list forest species uh, throughout the peninsula since uh, 11 major plants, which particularly interest in the troca for at situ conservation as in banks or respiratory for future exploration in breeding and, and uh, species uh, potential. To date, a total of uh, 79 species, at least uh, three species have been collected and effort in collecting more population are still being carried out under, under 12 measure plan. Here, I include here some photo of uh, red list plant in our, our collections. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the mission of three breeding program is to produce high quality planting material with, uh, with uh, desired trade for forest plantation and herbal farm. Another important aspect that is undertaken by the program is to establish a seedling seed orchard as a seed source. Eh? So the genetic information is needed to conduct uh, uh, genetic cleaning. Eh? Besides uh, timber species, uh, valuable medicinal plants have also been collected, selected for desired phenotypes or chemical constituents uh, before being mass propagated. One of the most popular herbs in, is uh, Labisia pomila or Kachik Fatima, which has received demand from the agriculture sector for improved plantain material. We have been used for obtaining extract with high content of, uh, of uh, phenolic and flavonoid compounds. The extract of this species have been developed into product with collaboration uh, with Prim uh, Corporation. Eh? Partnership with uh, local community have uh, succeeded in developing the selected cultivar for commercial production, generating additional income to the farmers. This collaboration uh, has also ensured the sustainability supply of accredited raw material for related healthcare industry. Free uh, through capability building program, a shared technique of cultivation, management, and post harvest technology with the farmers empowering uh, them with knowledge and skill for complying with good agriculture practices uh, in farm. Okay. The task to undertake research and development in the field of genetic, molecular breeding, genomic, genetic engineering, tissue culture, cryopreservation and seed technology is given to the biotechnology program. Development of uh, DNA profiling technology for identification and verification of a clone, or variety of cultiva, individual population and species is uh, important for the sustainable management of forest genetic resources. In addition, uh, generation of DNA database for identification and verification of timber and herbal species is key to the authentication of timber species in the construction industry and for addressing the problem of uh, adulteration in the herbal in industry. Uh, of here, DNA profiling of selected timber species sample from uh, Numerous population in focus in Peninsula Malaysia has produced comprehensive the database. Uh, the database of uh, DNA profiling has become important forensic evidence, which has assisted enforcement team from uh, Forestry Department and uh, Ministry of Health in matching or locating illegally fell lot to their stump at crime. We call it crime sites. The database will also support the potential for chain of custody certification. So another application on biotechnology in forestry is evident in the development of uh, plant material transfer guideline we have in the establishment of accredited geoplasm pen and generation of bird certificate for planting uh, material. Technology developed are not 
made exclusive for free, but it's transfer and share with uh, other government uh, government agency to empower enforcement officer while uh, they are carrying out their duties. Last but not least, uh, the role of upscaling technology for the production of timber, herbal and ornamental species using temporary emission uh, system uh, that increase production yet reduce cost. So Free have developed various protocol in tissue culture uh, and RITA, a type of temporary emission system for timber, herbal and ornamental uh, species based uh, on the needs and demand by the forestry and herbal industry as well as a uh, local uh, municipal council. So we found that the use of RITA for micropropagation helped to reduce uh, production costs uh, up to about uh, 55%. Okay. Since uh, December uh, 2019, the emergence of uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, that become, uh, became a global pandemic so studies show that uh, one of the, of the species of Posenbigia rotunda or, or local name, uh, we call it uh, finger root, exhibited a potent anti-SAR COV2 activity, whereby its attract may serve as a promising candidate for therapeutic uh, purposes with economic uh, advantage. The Center of uh, Biotechnology uh, Bio Entrepreneur in Frim has been focusing in uh, upscaling technology for several highly valued plant species. Recently, a study for uh, upscaling finger root using tips is uh, being, being conducted. So, okay. in summary, uh, biotechnology is a dynamic and emerging tool that is transfer transforming industry and impacting life. One of uh, the most fundamental and powerful uh, uh, knowledge for plant is the plant's genome. If doctor could predict cancer through genetic screening, could plant scientists also locate markers that uh, produce longer lasting seed or stem with bigger diameter? Or maybe someday grow tree from extinct herbarium specimens, who's not? Biotechnology solution can, that can be aimed at improving plant species and this forestry are already being explored. As more and more data, what uh, now we call is uh, big data, big data is available, further insight and opportunities for biotechnology will become apparent not only to improve uh, only biological conservation, but treating a uh, quantum leap in the forest uh, industry. Having said that, the convergence of scientific knowledge, robust genomic and uh, environmental data, as well as genetic engineering in the digital age will soon lead to the development of uh, dynamic cultivation, uh, in harvesting, processing uh, techniques, technologies, uh, which allow for earlier harvesting, less waste, and more sustainable use of uh, natural resources. And then with the support of uh, Malaysia government, current and future development in biotechnology are set to catalyze the forestry sector by providing solution and playing, playing uh, invaluable roles in conservation and sustainable measurement of uh, forest uh, species. So with that, I end up my presentation. So I leave uh, this point to ponder and pass back to the moderator. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, uh, we would like to thank you too, Dr. Zaki, for your sharing on the trends of biotechnology in forestry with us and for opening our minds to the vast opportunities offered by biotechnology as a tool for advancement in conservation and sustainable management, as well as utilization of forest resources. 
Um, next, just a gentle reminder for all participants and presenters, uh, please do fill in the form of attendance um, uh, for an e-certificate, which will be sent to you via your registered email. Um, it is unfortunate that our webinar is coming to an end, but definitely a relief for me. Uh, a set for say, at the same time also as I've truly enjoyed the talks and the active participation from all of you. But before that, a moment that uh, we have been waiting for, the announcement of the best poster and oral presentations. So uh, before that, I would like to uh, give a big thank you to the judges of our, our webinar who would um, prefer to remain an anonymous. So let me share with you the announcement on the, uh, of the winners. Okay. Just a moment, I'll reshare it. Um, uh, Sorry, I have been muted. So, now to the moment that we have been waiting for. First of all, the winner of the best poster, uh, best uh, oral presentation goes to Dr. Rahayu Maria Sukri from Brunei Darussalam. Congratulations for your exceptional presentation and Sure, we have all enjoyed your, pres uh, your presentation and your sharing. Coming up next is the best poster award. Which goes to Rosita Binti Ahmad and her team members. Congratulations for your excellent poster which has captured the eyes of our judges with both your presentation and contents. So all winners will receive an e-certificate from, uh, from us. Uh, this is Juan Rosita's winning poster. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Now with this, the regional webinar on ex situ conservation and carbon sequestration potential of red list tree species has come to an end. It has been two superb days and I'm grateful to all participants for joining us and making this event meaningful. I'm sure all of us learned something from this webinar and I also hope that this webinar becomes a platform for future collaborations among individuals institutions, and also among countries. I take this opportunity to thank all my members of the organizing committee who have been really dedicated to this task and for their full support and hard work. Again, a big thank you to all of you. And if I can, a big virtual hug to all of you too. We are all indebted to Frames Management and also Royal Forest Department of Thailand for the support given. And last but not least to AFOCO and Korea Forest Service who have generously supported the event. With this, I thank you all. Stay safe and see you again someday. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you and bye. Bye.